The football-playing histories of Bethune-Cookman University and Savannah State University date back almost to the very beginning. The first time these two schools met on the gridiron was in 1925, just two years after the first team representing the Daytona-Cookman Collegiate Institute took the field for the first time. Over the next 98 years, the Tigers and Wildcats would play over 50 more times and have dipped in and out of the same conferences throughout their shared history. BCU and SSU have been conference opponents in the SEAC, SIAC, and most recently the MEAC, with Savannah State dropping back to Division II in 2019 and BCU leaving for the SWAC in 2021. The Wildcats have mostly had the Tigers' number over the years, with many memorable moments in maroon and gold history against Savannah State, like a 67 0 victory in 1952, followed by a 98 0 scoreline in 1953, which still remains as the most lopsided defeat in Savannah State history. Or in 2012, when a 49 7 win clinched the outright MEAC title and an automatic playoff bid. Today, it's time for more history to be made as the 100th season of Bethune Cookman football continues. Live from Larry Kelly Field at Daytona Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida, this evening's presentation of Bethune-Cookman University Athletics on the Cat Eye Network is on the air. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Michael Trurillo. Happy to have your company. Analyst Daryl Natil will once again join me on the broadcast as well. Last week, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats kicked off their centenary season by traveling to Memphis, Tennessee, and fell 56-14 to the Memphis Tigers in the first ever meeting between the two programs. In what was a rough offensive display for first-year head coach Raymond Woody Jr., Bethune-Cookman was limited to just 91 yards of total offense on the night. Walter Simmons got the start at quarterback and was 10 of 18 for 18 yards. Backup quarterback Luke Sprague entered the game in the fourth quarter and connected on three of six passing for 21 yards. Running back Davino Ellington had 12 yards, while Omari Stewart broke off a 20-yard run in his lone carry of the evening. The Wildcats' defense was anchored by sophomore linebacker Dearis Thomas, who had a game-high eight tackles, Omari Hill Robinson added seven tackles with Jabari Jowden and had six tackles. I spoke with BCU head coach Raymond Woody Jr. to recap week one and look ahead to his first home game back in Daytona Beach. I'm here with coach Raymond Woody before the Wildcats take on the Savannah State Tigers for week two of the 2023 season. Coach, last week at Memphis, tough game against a really good Memphis team. What are your overall thoughts of the uh, travel experience? Well, well, I tell you what, I'm proud of the guys because they didn't quit. They fought to the very end. Um, you know, obviously the, the score, you know, didn't show. But as um, far as the work and, and them working together, you know, we were impressed, no fighting. I mean, things were, were progressing in the right direction and we've been having a good week of practice. You chose to start Walter Simmons at quarterback. That decision came pretty late uh, on the day of. Walk me through how you and the other coaches made that decision. Well, basically, you know, those guys, uh, you know, Luke, Sprague, and Tali, they are, those guys have been competing, and, and Walter's had, you know, he had a better week, you know, and, and like I tell the guys all the time, I mean, to get a job is up for you to keep your job, you know, so, you know, right now we're, we're still progressing, and it's all about results, and those guys know that anytime they get in a position, whether we say you've one this day, you got to keep it, you know, and that's competition. And obviously coming in with the new staff, new scheme, you know, we want productivity. And I thought Walt handled himself, you know, well, but obviously he knows he needs to get better. And, and the guys that's competing with him, they know they need to get better as well. The standout unit for me in the game was the defensive line, the front seven, especially against the pass. Um, was that something you knew? that you were going to have a strength thing coming out of camp, or is that something that surprised you in week one? Well, you know what, you know, obviously with uh, a whole new, you know, uh, scheme and, and new guys that hadn't played a lot, you know, I contributed that to, you know, the, the coaches, you know, uh, on that side of the ball, you know, putting those guys in a position to showcase, you know, their abilities. And, and, and that's what we got to do in, in all aspects, you know, of the game. But I, I knew going into the season, the D-line would be one of our strengths. Bethune Cookman has a long history against Savannah State. You're a big part of that history back in the 90s and now again as head coach. What are you looking forward to this week as you take on the Tigers? Well, you know, execution. You know, uh, guys being disciplined, 
understanding their five A's, you know, alignment, assignment, the adjustments, the alerts, and then the attack part. You know, we, if we master those five A's, you know, we'll, we'll put, you know, a good product out there. And then I don't expect anything less. First home game for you as a head coach? Personally, what are you looking forward to the most? Well, you know, just being back home, I mean, the crowd, the community, uh, you know, the players are excited. And, and I'm excited, you know, to, to play a game in that stadium again, now as a coach. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. As Coach Woody mentioned, East Carolina transfer Walter Simmons didn't know he was getting the start at quarterback last week until a couple hours before the game. In fact, Simmons was not even on the weekly two deep sent out to the media. As well as his 10 for 18 night through the air, the former Oakley High School dual threat impressed on the ground, carrying the ball nine times for 29 yards, meaning he was the team's leading rusher. I caught up with Walter to talk about getting the start, his thoughts on the Memphis game, and the week two matchup the with Southern State. The field. The are led by head coach I'm here with Walter Kilton. Simmons before the Wildcats take on the Savannah State Tigers here for week two of the 2023 season. Walter, you started last week against Memphis, played most of the game. Uh, that decision was made kind of late. When did you find out you were going to be starting? Um, we found out about two hours before the game, right before we left the hotel. Um, Coach Woody made a big announcement to the team, and it was a, it was a pretty good deal. Um, everyone, you know, kind of had their word in on it, and that's how they made the decision. Working with the running backs, it's got to feel pretty good. You've got Jimmy Robinson back there. You've got Juventus Levazil back there. How is working with that position group been for you through fall camp? Um, the running backs have been a big, a big role of our team. Them and the O line. You know, everyone's kind of done their part in our um, our offense and keeping our offense how it's been. So those guys have played a big role in our offense this year. What are your relationships with your wide receivers? Because you know that's the, probably the most important relationship a quarterback can have. And how is it like working with those guys in practice? And then uh, last Saturday at Memphis. So the wide receivers, they do a really good job of doing what the coaches ask them to do and doing what um, I ask them to do when I, whenever I do ask them to do things. You know, we, we stay on the same page for the most part. And, you know, we, we hang out outside of football, and that's how we build our, build our bond and build a strong connection together. How does facing a team and a defense like Memphis prepare you for the rest of the season? Um, I feel like facing a team like the school that we did play, um, it just it betters us as a whole, as a team and as an offense. You know, it gives everyone better. Um, I probably say everyone. After we watch the film, everyone does make their corrections, and we just get better overall. What are you looking forward to this week against Savannah State? Looking forward to a big game out of the offense and the defense. You know, we just gone out for the W, and everyone everyone does their part, and we'll, we'll be good. Thank you. Good luck this week. Yes, sir. Thank you. In a game where the Wildcats gave up over 500 yards of total offense, it would seem odd choice to call the defensive front seven the standout unit. But the VCU defensive line proved it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an FBS foe and give a good account of itself. The Maroon and Gold registered five tackles for loss, two sacks, and forced one of the best young quarterbacks in the country, Seth Hennigan, to throw two interceptions, overshoot his receivers multiple times, and caused a scoop and score fumble late in the game. The D-line was also responsible for all 14 points the Wildcats scored. Late in the fourth, Eddie Walls got into the backfield so fast he disrupted a Memphis handoff, forcing a fumble. Freshman Eduke Brown picked up the ball and raced the short distance to the end zone. All the way back in the first quarter, defensive end Amari Jones made the play of the day as he sprinted around the Memphis right guard, batted Seth Hennigan's pass straight up in the air, caught it, and ran nearly 80 yards the other way for the touchdown, juking Hennigan at the 20-yard line for good measure. The play garnered some social media attention as it was posted on the Barstool Gambling Twitter account. Game balls also go to Tyrone Franklin Jr., who picked off a wayward Hennigan pass in the second quarter, and Shelton Quarles, who picked off a deflected pass on the second drive of the game, ran it all the way back to the end zone. Unfortunately, replay showed that the ball had hit the ground, taking the touchdown off the board. I got a chance to catch up with Amari Jones later this week to talk about his pick six, the defensive unit, unit as a whole, and look forward to this week's matchup with Savannah State. I'm here with Amari Jones before the Wildcats take on Savannah State here for week two of the 2023 season. Amari, you had the highlight of the game for Bethune-Cookman, the 80-yard uh, touchdown return pick six. 
Um, it's gone a, a bit viral. It was featured on Barstool Sports as well as a couple other places. ESPN picked it up. Um, walk me through that play. Just kind of in your mind how it happened. Uh, so our coach had called one of our one of our calls, but I had an outside rush. I had made a move on him, moved at our coach, my position coach, Coach Coley. We work on day near every day. You know, he always speaks about uh, repetition and it's become muscle memory. So then I did it. I matched hands. That's what we call it when you put your hand up. So the quarterback, when the quarterback throws the ball, I hit it and I just caught it and ran with it. You made Hannigan, the quarterback, miss at about the 15 yard line. Nice little stutter step. Have you played any other positions outside of defensive line in your career? Uh, high school, I played all positions. I played safety, corner, running back, receiver. So I got a few different positions in my bag, yeah. The front seven was the standout group for me in that game. You were able to get pressure on the quarterback. You were able to disrupt a couple of things in the rushing game. What's been working under Coach Woody and your position coach has been like through fall camp and now through game one? Fall camp, uh, he came in, you know, new coaching. But we always, he always said, I have a plan. So our plan was, as a D-line group, was just to dominate, make sure our fits are right, and then everything just going to go the way it's supposed to. How does working alongside the other defensive linemen on the team feel? I know Eddie Walls is up there, uh, a couple of other guys. Uh, how is your chemistry? It's like it's a brotherhood. We call ourselves the creatures, so, you know, it's, I, all our thing is creature mentality. You know, dominate the person in front of you and always have your brother back, so it's just family. How does playing a team like Memphis prepare you for the battles you're going to face in the rest of the season? Please Memphis is another team, another team, another, they just got another jersey. That's all I do. So treat everybody with respect and then play at a high level. I don't think nobody can stop this. Thank you, Mario. Good luck this week. Today's Thank you. Our honorary captain for the coin toss is Daytona Beach Mayor Derek Henry. The Savannah State Tigers are 1-0 on the young season after a 23-20 win over the Southeastern University out of the NAIA in Lakeland. This win avenged a 34-14 loss to the Fire in the 2022 season opener and was the first time the Tigers won their season opening game since a 34-12 win over Livingston in 2009. Aaron Kelton is the 27th head coach in program history, and this is his second season in charge after stops at Howard, Shorter, Columbia, and Virginia State, among others. SSU has 15 players on the roster that have transferred from other schools, from D1 powerhouses like Pittsburgh all the way down to the junior college ranks. But the Tigers recruit well in their own backyard, also having 14 players on their roster from 10 different local high schools around Savannah. As for individual players to watch out for, four football players were named to the preseason all-conference team. Offensive linemen Kyle Frazier and Ryan Adams and running back Shamarcus Poole were named to the first team, while punter and kicker Kenneth Lockhart was named for the second team. Sophomore Jaden Adams will take the majority of snaps at quarterback. The junior dual threat from Savannah took over in the second half of the 2022 game against Southeastern and has held the starting job ever since. While on the defensive side, linebacker Tavari Bruton matched his career high in tackles last week, last week with 10. Savannah State enters today's contest ranked number five in the latest D2 HBCU football top 10 poll. The Tigers also received votes in the latest box to row HBCU Division II coaches poll. That was the Week 2 Opponent Report. Thank you for tuning in early for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats pregame show. Now as we close in for kickoff for the 2023 home opener, I'd like to welcome in my broadcast partner for the evening, Daryl Nettiel. Daryl, it's good to be back, it's good to be at home, and it's good to be live on the Cat Eye Network. Been waiting for this almost seven months. You know, Coach Woody comes in, changes the program around, 70 new players on the roster. A home game last week, the Wildcats showed up in Memphis. Great defensive front we saw. We saw vanilla offense. You know, we only played four plays in the home game. We saw the, uh, the quarterback come in, and he really basically just handed off and threw the tunnel screen. But this afternoon, we look for the Wildcats to play a different brand of football. We're going to see Walter Simmons again at quarterback, and we're going to see that stellar defense this afternoon. What are you looking for on the offensive side specifically that may, against the defense that is not as good as the Memphis Tigers, maybe be a better game for us today on the offensive side. I like to see us go more vertical down the field. You know, like I said last week, we threw the uh, tunnel screen, and, and when Sprague came in, he threw a couple of passes down the sideline. We saw two targeting calls on the vertical passes. So I like to see them open up the offense a little more, see the running game get going, and see these fabulous receivers that we have. 
The Bethune-Cookman marching band is off to the right in two long rows, getting ready to welcome the Wildcats on to the field. Savannah State has won the toss and chosen to the third. Our clumps just outside of the visiting locker room off to the left. The Savannah State Tigers uh, brought their game today all the way down from Savannah to the right. It's the call of the wild. You got to get at least one percent better in what you do. You either get better or you get worse. No one stays the same. No one stays the same. There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to run. It's time to hide. Give it up for your wife! As the band plays the fight song, the BCU diagonal letter mark is painted in maroon and gold across the 50-yard line as the Wildcats run towards the student section away to our left. I think the Cats going to be receiving. Savannah State won the toss and deferred into the second half, so the Cats going to get on offense early. We're going to see Deeds, Mr. Deeds, all swag returner, get an opportunity this afternoon. Darnell Deeds only had one kick return last night, or last week, I should say, for 18 yards. The Memphis special teams unit really keyed in on him as a defender. Come on, Wildcat, they say Lil' Ray never if you Wildcats! Hopefully he gets a better chance to shine today. Well, I talked to him after the game, and he said he was told to fair catch those balls. So we didn't really show anything on the special teams last week. He did return one out of the end zone and got 19 yards, I think, on the opening kickoff. But this afternoon, you're going to see a more wide open Wildcat team. Like you said before, this is a Division II opponent. We played them a number of times. We, we, we've held, we've held our, our, ourselves well against them. 38 wins, eight losses, and three ties. I think the last time we played them, uh, the last two times we Was played it? them, we defeated them. Yep. They, they upset us in 2019 up in Savannah. And it is raining. There is rain coming down here at Daytona Stadium out of Nowhere. partly cloudy skies above as the All right, don't knock nobody over. crowd. Wildcats got the ball first. Ducking for cover. The game will go on. We're not going to stop for a little bit of rain. That's a drizzle, man. This is a fast shower. This is Daytona Beach, the world's most famous. Yeah, but the band is uh, now made their way off the field. We're just waiting for the teams to get settled. I wonder if they called a delay because everybody seems to be evacuating the stadium on both sides of the of the stands. Now, if they call a lightning delay, teams wouldn't be on the field. Teams okay, be going so to the locker room. it's just the folks don't want to get their new hairdo wet. <laughs> Wildcats are now on the field, ready to receive the kick. Darnell Dees is back there. Deep, he stands at the five-yard line. The other man back there is Juvensley Bazul, the running back. So here we go. The Tigers are set to kick off from the 35-yard line. They'll kick it right to left. The kicker is a junior from Hinesville, Georgia, Georgia Kenneth Lockhart. I mentioned in the pregame show, second team, all SIAC in the preseason for his kicking prowess. Now, most people who went down in the tunnel now turning around and coming back because it stopped raining. Just a little sun shower. We get It's not still drizzling a little bit, but we get those 
every day here during the summer and fall here in Daytona Beach. The kick is away, and we are underway in game two of the season. The ball goes over Deez's head and out of the back of the end zone. The Wildcats will get the ball at the 25. And as we said in the pregame show, here comes Walter Simmons the third, the native of Orange Park, Florida, and a transfer from East Carolina, former Oak Leaf High School quarterback. Need to see more out of him today early on. Got to see more out of him. You know, we got a couple other guys that's playing the position, too. And like Coach Whitty says, every day there's competition. So, Trey, as they call him, has done well this week, and he's getting to start again. From the 25-yard line, going left to right, the Wildcats trot out now. Once again, maroon helmets, black jerseys, maroon pants, gold numbers, gold stripes on the shoulders. Simmons is in the gun. With Jimmy Robinson, sidecar right, three receivers, two left, single right, four-man front for Savannah State. Simmons takes his takes the snap, stands oh, in the pocket, right throws open. deep down the field, wide open to Let's the 45, go. down the right sideline, past the right. to the Savannah State 45 to the 30-yard line. What a catch by Tink Boyd, first play of the game. You call it. <laughs> Tink Boyd is a transfer from Virginia Tech, you know, Jawan Boyd. I love this kid, great speedy receiver. Wide open down the sideline, first down for the Wildcats. And they're going to go hurry up offense. We'll see where they spot the ball. Boyd rumbled down to the 30. They're going to spot the ball all the way back at the 37-yard line. Quick snap. Simmons throws into the flat to the far side. The pass is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Davino Ellington. We're seeing now that the Cats are going more vertical down the field. A down and out pass that time. The, the uh, defensive back undercut it. Good thing it was high because he undercut that. That's a pick six. A little bit of tempo from the Wildcats early on. Not expecting that after what we saw last week. They took as much time off the clock every snap as they could. Now the Wildcats will let the clock run. 14-22 first quarter early on here. Simmons with two receivers to the right, none to the left. First handoff of the game goes to Jimmy Robinson up the middle to the 45, bowling his way past the 30, and he's going to be spotted down to the 28-yard line, close to a first down. Jimmy Robinson is a little, little hard-nosed kid out of Flagler. His brother, Jimmy Robinson the second, was one of our greatest running backs the last couple of years. Only had seven yards for Robinson last week. Robinson up the middle on third and short. He gets close to the line to gain. Needed to get to the 27. Got to the 26. First down, BCU. Cats moving the football in tempo. You get the ball that time up the middle. He pounded his way in for the first down. Couple of changes on BCU's side. Davino Ellington was out for one play. Now he's back in at wide receiver. And Simmons goes under center. Now a back up to the shotgun. Tink Boyd, the receiver to the right, three to the left. Robinson still in the backfield, shifts from right to left alongside Simmons. One man in motion. That's the Kari Allen Johnson left to right. Simmons claps his hands, takes the snap against the four-man rush. Simmons takes off. He's going to get to the third, uh, 25, spun backwards, out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it. They'll Pick up him, a yard. They'll give him a one-yard gain to the 26-yard line. He has to continue to cut up the grain. He tried to stretch it to the sideline. He, he cuts up. He has an alley there. Officially credited with nine, 18 yards on nine carries after the sacks uh, last week against Memphis. And that was some of our most successful offensive plays early on. Second down and nine from the 26 of Savannah State going left to right. Simmons fakes the handoff, takes it himself, runs to the left. Now pitches it back to Robinson. Robinson running backwards at the 30, trying to find a lane. And he's going to continue to go backwards. And he's going to be dropped all the way back at the 32-yard line. That play started out shaky because... It was going to be an auction, and he decided to RPO it and try to go upfield, and he pitched it late. And then Robinson tried to come back the other way against the grain. We're going to lose about three on the play. It's going to be third and about 13. Cornerback Elijah Norwood made the tackle, did a good job of staying with um, Robinson. Now third down and 13 officially from the 30-yard line. Got to get... Close to the 15 for a first down. Simmons escapes to his right. Now he's going to run 30, 35 to the 20. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 21-yard line, four yards shy of a first down. Here comes our field goal kicker. He was booting them 52 yards before the ball game. This is Cade Hector, the redshirt sophomore from Sydney, Australia, the product of the Pro Kick Australia program. Did not have a field goal attempt last week against Memphis. 
but did kick two extra points and was the primary man on kickoff. Hector will kick this one from, let's call this 39 yards. Ball spotted up a right hash. Snap, hold, kick on the way, and through the raindrops, it is off the uprights and no good. My goodness. So Cade Hector's first ever college football field goal attempt is wide to the left. And that, unfortunately, a Wildcat drive that started off with a lot of promise ends up with nothing. No score, 11-24 to go here in the first quarter. Got a lot of new features here in the press box. We got some new screens and some nice AC in here. Yeah. City I've, manager. I mean, I've been calling yeah. games in here for a number of years, mostly high school. Derek Fitch, uh, city manager, he's done a lot of upgrades here. New locker room, new seats in the stands. Out traps, uh, trots Jay Laddams, the junior from Savannah, Georgia. He's going to be the quarterback for Savannah State. He's in the gun. The running back is A.J. Brown to his left. Three receivers all to the right. Now Brown goes in motion. It's going to be a screen pass. It's deflected and incomplete off the fingertips of Joseph That's Hampton, who went in motion left to right. And that play is going to go nowhere, second and ten. That's almost like a tall sweep, even though he threw it lateral to the line of scrimmage. Joseph Hamilton, a freshman from Evans, Georgia. Over 1,000 rushing yards his senior year of high school second at 10. Evans High School. Second down and 10. Ball spotted at the Savannah State 21-yard line. The Tigers in blue and orange going right to left. Sidecar right. Hamilton moves into the backfield alongside Adams. Three receivers in bunch formation out by the numbers to the right. Handoff up the middle. Hamilton cuts it back. He's going to drag a defender for about six yards, get to the 29-yard line. Kiaris Thomas, who led the Wildcats in tackles last week, made the stop. Third it's down. Third. Cool on defense. Let's get fired up. Let's go, last week Wildcats. We saw on the field a long time. Not a long, sustained Memphis drives. The rain, what little of it, is now gone as the Wildcats are filing back into the sands. Third down and three. Ball at the 29-yard line of Savannah State. Hamilton in motion. Adams takes the snap. It's over the first time. Throws over oh. the middle, and it's tipped and incomplete. It was almost intercepted. Yeah. Off the fingertips of Shelton Quarles Jr., who is looking for a little bit of redemption after his interception that wasn't last week. Yeah, he had opportunity this time to get a real interception. You know, he, his dad is the director of football operations for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I know he's watching in this afternoon from Tampa. Fourth down and three. They're going to punt it away. This is Kenneth Lockhart back on the field. He does both the kicking and punting for Savannah State. Is that Deeds back there? It Can't tell. looks like Juvensley Bazool, but I cannot tell from this angle. The Wildcat uniforms do not have TV numbers. Low snap. Lockhart gets the kick away, spiraling end over end. It's going to bounce at the Wildcat 30, go towards the sideline, Great. take a BCU bounce and be downed at the 40. That kick back about 10 yards from where it initially landed, and the Wildcats are in business First almost at midfield. We didn't get a chance to see the kick turn team last year, last week, because I, think, I don't think Memphis punted the football at all. In the, they punted once. They punted once. And it was a touchback. Okay. So the offense back on the field. Walter Simmons wearing number eight, trots back out to lead the offense. Decent drive on the first possession, but was stopped up close to the red zone. Three receivers to the left, single right. Jimmy Robinson still in it running back. Four down linemen for Savannah State. Savannah State brought a lot of pressure last time. Here they come again. Here's the snap, 10.25 on the clock. He's trying to flare it out to Robinson on a screen. Incomplete second down. They're bring, behind him. They're bringing the blitz on the right side. We're not picking it up. We've got one man coming free, and he's forcing the quarterback to hurry his pass. That's Justin Gilbert, the defensive end, wearing number 95, causing the BCU offensive line some problems. He's a junior from Cobb, Georgia. Second down and 10 from the 40. Wildcats going right to left. Fullback in the backfield for the first time. Hand off Jimmy Robinson. He untouched into the second level, and he's going to get seven yards to the 47. Well, Jimmy slid through there for like six yards. He's a hard nosed little kid, man. He's strong. First man to make contact with him was Gary Davis Jr., the sophomore out of Cairo, Georgia. A lot of Georgia kids on this SSU team. Third down and three now. 
Fullback still in there along with Robinson. Robinson, the handoff. No, Simmons keeps. Avoids a tackle all the way back to the 40. He's going to be wrapped up and dropped for a huge loss on third down all the way back to the 40, a loss of seven. If that was an RPO, he should have read that one to give to the fullback because he went through clean and kept the football. It's going to be fourth and ten. We're going to have to punt the ball. Deion Bell, the linebacker senior, shot back there and made Simmons' life difficult. And when we were talking before the game, we thought, you know, maybe Savannah State, Division II opponent, has gone through some rough patches in recent years, was going to come in and kind of roll over them. Their defense has stepped up early against this BC well, they're, offense. They're a solid ball club. They have some great kids on the defensive side of the ball. This is the other Australian, Max Tulin, on the punt. His punt goes straight up in the air. It's going to be a short kick. It's going to land at the 42-yard line and be down at the 41 of Savannah State. So about a 20-yard punt. We saw him last week. Yeah, he he and then he kicked 160 yards after that one. So he's still working it out, working the kicks out. On the he's Eleven points. No, Plenty of practice. Yeah, had one about 20 yards, and then had a couple that he just completely booted. Probably had the wind at his back. As the Wildcats. Marching band now enters the stands right below our broadcast position. First and 10, Savannah State, 9.04 to go in the first quarter, no score. Adams in the gun, one man in motion. It's gonna be an interior handoff straight up the middle, powering forward for a few yards is A.J. Brown. They'll get two. First man to him on the defensive side was Eddie Walls. Eddie Walls is a solid football player. He had a great game last week. That interior line is displaced. Eddie Walls, Deontay Washington, Adrian Hall up front there for the Thune Cookman on the defensive line. The BCU primarily running 3-4 in their defensive sets. Second and eight from the 42 after the two yard run. This is Joseph Hampton back in at running back for Savannah State. Adams in the gun, makes the snap. Looks to throw, down the right hash. Man running free, it's incomplete over his head. If that pass had a little bit less on it, Brent Carr is gone for a touchdown. Yeah, he broke through in the secondary. Uh, a couple of guys uh, trying to take, trying to bite on the out. He took the ball straight down the seam and the quarterback was good to the ball. He's matched up one-on-one with Steven Petterman for Bethune Cookman, the cornerback. And do not take this Savannah State offense lightly either. No. They've got some really good Bring guys out there. Carr, Deshaun Mitchell, Randy Scott, Demke Colbert, all names to watch out for at wide receiver. Huge third down right here. Third down and eight from the Savannah State 42. Adams, the bell tie snap, rolls to his right, has protection. Now he's gonna dump it off short and short of a first down is the receiver. Julian Roberts, the tight end, Needed eight, got about six before he was pushed out of bounds on the right-hand side. They're gonna punt it. Gonna play field position. Battle of the defenses here early on. No score, 8.06 to go, first quarter. We used to play some knockout, drag-out football games with this team when they were in the MEAC, so they feel comfortable coming in here. They're not afraid of us because we're in the swag. We played them over 50, 60 times. The last time these two teams met was when uh, Savannah State was in the MEAC, their last season in the MEAC, and BCU won that game 35 to 20 back in 2018. Kenneth Lockhart to punt. D's back to receive. This punt is spiraling. It's gonna bounce and go out of bounds near the 25, so no chance on a return again. It looks like they are intentionally kicking it away from the BCU returners. Well, they know the, they know the stats on our return team. That, that's one of our strong points from last season. We had some great special team players with Deeds and a couple other guys that got into the portal. Okay. But that's the way we really generated our offense last year through our special teams. No offense to speak of for either team so far. 7.35 to go first quarter. BCU, two first downs to Savannah State's none. Averaging five yards per play, but that early big connection to Tink Boyd helps that. I Haven't gone really down the field since then. I think we break the lead on the end zone. First and 10 for Bethune Cookman at their own 25, going left to right. One receiver in motion, that's Dakari Allen Johnson. Handoff up the middle. This is 
Uh, Jaden Bivens, he's gonna push the pile forward past the 30, still turning his legs to the 35. He's still going, and he pushes the pile all the way past the 35 to the uh, to the 39 yard line, a 19 yard game on a dive straight up the middle. He had nine yards and he picked up 10 extra ones on the, on the scrunch. That was some old timey rugby style football right there. Everybody in a clump just who can push the pile more. Strong kid. First and 10 to the 39 now. Simmons once again in the gun. Allen Johnson in motion. It's going to be a jet sweep to Dakari Allen Johnson. Picks up a block, tries to turn up field, gets bulldozed at the 40 yard line. Just a one yard gain. Nice tackle by Josh Dorsonville for Savannah State. Dorsonville made a great tackle because he was the only man there. He missed that tackle. And he, he misses that tackle. Mm -hmm. Dakari Allen Johnson's gone He's down gone. the sideline. He's gone. He did a good job. He lowered the pad level, caught him about thigh high with the pads and chopped him down after a gain of only one. Near hash now, second down and nine. Snap to Simmons, only a four-man rush. Bivens up the middle, dives for a gain of two more. Short one on the play. Gary Davis again in on the stop. He's gonna be key for them as a line, the middle linebacker. Well, I'm watching the offensive line. They're, they're, they're a work in progress. They're making some great blocks, the but there are some guys on the backside who kind of letting their guys slip into the gaps. So let's see what happens here at third and about seven. Call it six. Third and six officially on the board from the 43-yard line. Bethune Cookman tried to avoid a third straight punt. Simmons alone in the gun, five receivers. He's going to throw it quickly over the middle, tipped and incomplete, threw it in front of Dakari Allen Johnson, who tried to make a one-handed catch, but it grazed off his fingertips and another three and out for Bethune Cookman. These teams trading three and outs, three back to back. Dakari was wide open. He just rushed the throw. The blitz was on, but we had picked the blitz up that time. He'd take his time and just hit him in stride. Dakari's still running. The one time that he has connected a pass down the field, it was a curl not a slant or a go, so. Second punt attempt here for Max Tulin. Tulin takes the snap, gets the punt away at his own 35. This is a low line drive kick. It's gonna go out of bounds at the Savannah State 35. And they, both of these teams are just kind of playing between the 35s, going back and forth and back and forth. Nobody has any momentum right now. Yeah, that was a kick off the side of the foot. A 30 yard punt. I don't know if the ball still wet or something. It's not raining anymore. It rained for about 15 minutes right at the start of the game. The defense need to hold tight right here. Pretty good crowd out here today at Bethune oh, yeah. Cookman. Uh, student section yeah. filled almost and, and all the way up. The car is still lined up outside trying to get into the visitors' parking lot. Visitors, the, home, the home parking lot is full. Visitors. Decked out in orange and blue to away to Let's go, Let's go, beyond down, the field to the visitors' stands. First down and 10 for Savannah State. No big plays here. No big plays. Let's play D. From the 35-yard line, Adams in the gun. Hamilton, the running back. He takes the snaps. No, oh, it's going to be ha Adams on a keeper. To the 40, left side, close to midfield. First down, 11-yard gain on, a, on an First RPO. Down. Yeah, something opened up on that side. I don't know if there was a Jumping twist in the there, but the hole opened up. Quarterback saw it, took it up the field for the first down. Steven Sparrow made the tackle, but a first down for Savannah State. Their first move of the chains of the afternoon moves the ball to the 46 yard line, going right to left, approaching midfield. Ball on the left hash. Adams with Hampton back there with him. Hands the ball off to be this is Zaire Williams Ooh, up hit. the middle, a huge hit. Quarles. Jelton Quarles has come to play today. Had the pass break up on an earlier drive and now a big hit, no gain on the play. That was the junior Zaire Williams who carried. That's the fourth running back to carry the ball for uh, Savannah State early on. Yeah, Quarles out of Tampa, Florida, man. He's a kid growing up right here on the field. No gain on the play, second down, Tigers. Second down and 10 after no gain. Still at the 46 yard line. Adams takes the shotgun, snap rolls to his right under pressure, flips it out there off the hands of its intended receiver, Randy Scott, and incomplete. Yeah, the rush was on that time. Quarterback rolled to the right. He had a pitch and catch, just overthrew him. Both quarterbacks seem a little uneasy on their throws here early on. Here comes Amari Jones into the ball game. 
Mari Jones, the man that made the big play last week, wears number 17. Zaki Brown. Got some fresh pass rushes in the game. Third and long. Third and 10 now. Three receivers right, single left, plus the tight end on the right-hand side. Only a four-man rush for BCU. Adams forced to roll out of the pocket to his right, throw down the middle of the field. Diving catch made at the BCU 40-yard line. First down, Savannah State, Julian Roberts, the tight end with the catch, and the Number Tigers are in Wildcat Tiger territory for the down. first time today. Yeah, Roberts just settled in to the middle of the field behind the zone and just waited for the ball. A fifth-year senior, Julian Roberts, all five seasons at Savannah State. Spot the ball at the BCU 39. Play action, over the middle, incomplete, looking for Shamarcus Poole. That's the first time we've seen that straight play action instead of kind of an RPO style look. They're trying to hit a quick seam up the middle. Come on, man. They've tried to do that a couple of times now. and The receivers are open down there, but uh, it's been overthrows for Jaden Adams, the junior out of Savannah, Georgia, and Islands High School. 124 yards, one touchdown, no interception to the win against Southeastern last week. Second and 10 from the BCU 39 going right to left. 3.50 to go in this fast moving first quarter. Adams up the middle, handoff, five yard gain. Joseph Hampton on the carry. He's a low two going through, he's a big kid. Now, excuse me, that was Zaire Williams. 206, the official numbers. 5'9", 206 from Greenville, North Carolina. One of the few transfers on this team from Lewisburg College. Another third down, and we'll call this a medium. It's third down and seven. Savannah actually third going into the huddle. I haven't seen a huddle. That's not how, <laughs> not how college football is played nowadays. It's all up-tempo all the time. They do break the huddle now. Two receivers left, one to the right. They're all pretty bunched up inside the hash marks. Adams throws it middle, caught for a gain of one, and driven back. Demke no Colbert made the catch, and Johnny on the spot to make the tackle was Dearest Thomas. Dearest Thomas read that perfectly, That's came up and he made a catch. good lick after a gain of one yard and, and moved him back a couple yards. It's going to be third, fourth down. Steven Petterman was also in on that tackle. I don't think Savannah State's in field goal range. No, they will send out Kenneth They'll Lockhart send out the to punt and try and pin Bethune-Cookman deep. This is the third different returner we have seen for Bethune-Cookman so far today. This is... Jawan Boyd back there trying to return a kick. He stands at the 10-yard Tink, line. Tink's a speedster now. He, he get this thing, he hit the sideline. He might be gone. We've seen Dees. We've seen Allen Johnson and now Boyd. Punt goes straight up in the air. It's going to fall down at the two in the end and zone. get into the end zone. He didn't get the backspin on it that he wanted, did Kenneth Lockhart. The Wildcats will get the ball at the 20-yard <laughs> line. 2.16 to go in a... No score game here in the first quarter. We're seeing our defense bend and not break, and we're seeing a lot of kids, a young football team, grow up right before our eyes. We've seen Coral uh, make, make a made a few plays. We've seen Sparrow make a few plays, looking for their offense right now to break the seal on the end zone. Walter Simmons, two for five, 39 yards through the air. Wildcats on the ground, 33 yards rushing. Simmons back in at quarterback, ball at the 20-yard line. Got the fullback in the backfield as well. Hand off up the middle on a trap play. Nowhere. And he gets a I'm loss a of one. one. This is Terry Lindsay. First time we've seen the red shirt junior game. out of Fort Myers in the game. And the defensive front for Savannah Lots State, been impressive so far. Haven't really been able to establish good rushing lanes up the middle. That's the strength of their football team. Their, their, their defensive front. Some big guys up there. We've got Nathaniel Chisholm, 280. Tony Roundtree, 325 in the middle. Simmons takes the snap. Extra man comes on the blitz. Simmons is going to be wrapped up and dropped back at the 22-yard line. He had time that Excuse time. me, back at the 16-yard line. He had time. He stepped up in the park and he delivered the football, but he held it too long. Third two, and long. Two straight negative plays. That means it's a third and 14. Got to get the ball at the 30-yard line. Get a big play right here for the first time. Third and 14, ball at the 16-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Three wide receivers to the left, they're one to the right. Up top. They're playing man up top. Nikari Allen-Johnson motions out to make it five wide receivers. 
Simmons, time in the pocket, gonna heave one down the left sideline, got to Kari Allen Johnson out there, it's intercepted. It was overthrown and picked off by Drayshawn Dawkins, the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, and Savannah State takes over at their own 40-yard line. This as good as a punt. <laughs> it was an arm punt. Yeah, arm punt. But again, momentum to Savannah State right now. Well, that was double coverage because he had Dawkins in front of him and Elijah Norwood behind him. And so if that ball is yeah. overthrown, it's intercepted. If it's underthrown, it's intercepted. That's a really tough throw to make, and it was just overthrown. He made his mind up, you know, where he was going to go with the football because there was a guy in, down the uh, Dakari Jackson across the middle, wide open. 54 seconds to go first quarter. Play tough defense. You hear the Savannah State Band from across the way playing. I'm sure the Savannah State fans that have made the trip from Georgia are very pleased about how their team, especially defense, has played in this first quarter. First and 10 to 40. Adams takes the snap, fakes one way, now throws the other way wide open down the field and incomplete. Deshaun Mitchell had about 10 yards of space either side of him at the BCU 40, and the ball was thrown behind him. Yeah, somebody missed the coverage right there. He was wide open on the flats and uh, just overthrown. Yeah, it's BCU playing with fire as I see Luke Spray warming up down on the sideline for Bethune Cookman. Maybe we'll see the junior college transfer in the game before long. That would be nice. Second down and 10 from the Savannah State 40. The Tigers have the ball in a scoreless game. 49 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Adams with Hampton to his right. Two receivers right, single left. Takes the snap, handoff, Hampton, no, it's a play action. Over the middle, the pass is low and complete to Deshaun Mitchell, cross midfield to the 49-yard line of Bethune-Cookman, first down, Savannah State. Great pass and catch that time. Possession receiver, catches the ball low, picked up the first down. Deshaun Mitchell, all four years at Savannah State, is a senior this year from Inman, South Carolina. Two receptions for 20 yards last week against Southeastern. 18 seconds and counting on the clock in the first quarter. Adams takes the snap, ball at midfield, handoff. Round to the left-hand side goes Joseph Hampton, and he's cut down there. Actually, they're going to say a loss on the play back to midfield. Second down at 11. We will hit that second down at 11 play after the end of the first quarter. No score here between the Savannah State Tigers and the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. We've hit the end of the first quarter, and we'll take a quick break. You're listening to the University of Cat Network, 1380 The Cat, streaming live, 1380WELETheCat.com. There's no Bethune-Cookman University without you. Want to have your photos featured for all Wildcat Nation to see? Show us your school spirit and your content could be shared on the video board, the web, or on social media. Scan the QR code now, and you can see your photos featured later in today's game. Welcome back to Daytona Stadium. Michael Chirillo, Gerald Matia on the broadcast booth with you for this home opener for Bethune-Cookman football here in 2023. The Wildcats and the Tigers of Savannah State not at zero. Savannah State has the ball to start the second half. They'll go left to right ball at midfield facing second down and 11. One man in motion left to right. It's going to be a jet sweep. Around, trying to find Ooh. a way through, nowhere to go. Deshaun Mitchell got absolutely hammered by Dearis Thomas. Dearis Thomas was chasing the Jets, sweep and laid a blow 
on the running back. They're going to lose four yards on the play. He was really humming that time. Another uh, superlative on that play goes to Adrian Let's Hall, the defensive lineman who undercut the angle and made it easy it's for Thomas to make that down. stop. That's the first, second time we've seen a jet sweep try. BCU's tried one, and now Savannah State's tried one. I think it's two plays for a combined, like, negative 15, 16 yards. Look for him to go to the air, third and 14. Third, yeah, third and 14. Ball at the 47-yard line of Savannah State. Adams in the gun, two receivers left, two receivers right. Adams takes the snap, extra man coming off the edge. Adams has to escape, he's gonna be sacked! Back at the 37-yard line! Nobody touched Shelton Quarles Jr. as he came hurtling off the edge. Have yourself a first half, young man. Wow. Tristan with the sack. The correction, that was Jalen Christian yep. on the tackle. Jalen Christian, number 30. Nickelback. Nickel was on the was on the edge, came across line of scrimmage, untouched. I'll tell you what, sack. this this BCU defense is real. They're growing up right before our eyes. We just gotta get the offense going. Fourth down and a country mile now from the 37-yard line. Hey, we got a punt return now. Who's back now? Oh, delay of game. And it looks like it will be a, a delay of game. As legal procedure. Head coach Aaron Kelton throws his arms in the air on the far side. Uh, second season in charge for Aaron Kelton. 27 head coach. School history. Five-yard penalty. Has opportunity Five right down. here to They're bring gonna, some electricity to the stadium. Back him up five more yards. Ball officially on the 33-yard line, fourth down and 23. Lockhart with his toes on the 20. Gets the punt away. Boyd goes back. Fair catch at the 23-yard or 26-yard line. He'll spot it right there. A couple of stats from the first quarter for Bethune Cookman. Jimmy Robinson, 27 yards on the ground. He's doing pretty well. Jake Bivin, 17 yards, uh, nine, or uh, eight, 17 yards, 16 of those on one play. As the Wildcats offense comes back onto the field, and we were talking during the break. We want to see a new quarterback. Here's Luke Sprague. Luke Sprague in the ball game. Came in and threw six passes for 21 yards. In the game against Memphis, he's in the gun. He takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball off up the middle, powering forward, gain of just about two yards. Now fall forward for one more yard. Let's see who's on the carry. I believe it's Jimmy Robinson. And it is. Jimmy Robinson, a three-yard gain right up the middle. He's a hard runner, Robinson, even for someone who's only five foot seven. Spray comes to us from Springfield, Pennsylvania. Nassau Community College. And before that, LIU, Sprague to throw. Plenty of time in the pocket. He's going to dump it off short. Robinson has all day. 30, 35, 40. Breaking tackles to the 41-yard line. Jimmy Robinson in space, showing off some wheels. Tackle. Robinson got a nasty kill up. Took his checks down, and nobody was open. Hit the right back out of the backfield for the first down. Wildcats going quickly. Ball at the 41-yard line. It's a screen to the left-hand side. Ellington. Caught at the 30. Ellington. Should be caught at the 40, down towards the 46-yard line. And oh, it'll be five yards they took on the ball first down. Oh, no. It's Savannah State football. I got to see the replay. because That was Corey Turner on the catch. The freshman from Cedar Hill, Texas. He fumbled the ball, and Savannah State has it in BCU territory. Yeah, Corey Turner, the receiver, looked like he stepped out of bounds, and the ball was stripped That's out right. of his hand. Going to be the first turnover this afternoon for the Wildcats. First turnover. Not counting we had, a on down. we had a fumble last week. One, so. Yes, we had one fumble and one turnover on downs. My apologies. But so Savannah State, just when Bethune Cookman thought they were getting some offense going, I, I think sticking with Sprague is a good idea. He's got command of the pocket. I think letting him stay there and, and dial up this defense is going to be good for us going forward. But Savannah State back on the field 12 16 to go first quarter wildcats and tigers tied at zero though on bethune cookman side of the field going left to right at the 47 yard line handoff up the middle hamilton wrapped up and dropped gain of only two yards Inside handoff number 39. Short gain on jefferson the lafont made the tackle the freshman from miami he'll be going home next week as the wildcats take on the hurricanes we got a short week before we know it we'll be down in 
Miami Garden. That's a Thursday night game. You can catch that one with Daryl and I on the Cat Eye Network Radio on YouTube and 1380 WELE, the Cat. Got to be smart right here. They're going to try to hit something on the top. They called it a gain of three, third down and seven from the 44-yard line. Should be second down. Adams hands to Harrison, or excuse me, to uh, Zaire Williams, who's in the backfield this time. Pushes past the 40. Gets four more yards. Sets up third down and three. Got a, big, in, got an injured player on the field. It's and third. Come on, defense. Let's get fired up. Let's Green go, Wildcats. Down. Deontay Washington's coming in. Adrian Hall's coming in. That's uh, 246, 297, and 254 pounds across that defensive line as we do have a downed Savannah State Tiger. You know, one of the changes I've seen since Coach Woody's been here, it's been the strength program, the strength and conditioning program. They, they remodeled the weight room, they repainted the weight room. They brought in a young man from Western Carolina, Coach Gaffney, and he's been doing a great job with these kids as far as strength and conditioning. Remember to tune in to 1380WELE at halftime for the halftime report from Dan Ryan on the 1973 Wildcat football team that won the SIAC championship. And Robin McLaren, daughter of the legendary athletic director and coach Cy McLaren, talks about the oldest dorms on campus, Curtis and Megis being torn down. Your Megs and Curtis, you ride through the campus now, it's a whole nother look. You ride through there now, it's no longer Curtis Hall, and Megs is going to be torn down next week. It's just a pile of rubble. I got people texting me to go get bricks for them and send them bricks. Once, the old dormitories. once again, you can listen to that halftime show on 1380 The Cat, streaming live at 1380WELEThecat.com. If you're joining us on the Cat Eye Network for our visual coverage on YouTube today, you will not hear that halftime show. You will be treated to the bands, the marching band. Savannah State back on the field after the injured player. 11.26 and counting to go. Big it's place. a third down and three from the 39-yard line. One man in motion left to right. Hand off up the middle to Williams. He's going to push forward. He's going to nope. be close. He's going to be short by a yard. Needed the 41, got to the 42, did Zaire Williams. Only had one carry for three yards last week. He is lighting up the scoreboard this week. Williams Thomas again, man. I'm going to stop that kid right there, man. Williams already up to 11 yards on five carries. They're going to go for it, fourth down and one. And you're, you're, you're outside of field goal range, and punting now is most likely to end up in a, in a touchback, so I don't mind them going for it this year. Big defensive stand coming up for BCU. Fourth and one from the 42-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. They're going to come this way with it. Adams in the gun. Two receivers to the right. Inside handoff, first down and more. Breaking tackles down inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. That was Joseph Hamilton, the freshman, on the on the on the trap play. Excuse me. He got past the initial line of scrimmage and found a crease, took it up to the first down. Remember, Bethune Cookman had a chance to take the lead on their opening drive of the game, but missed a field goal, donked off the left upright from Cade Hector. Oh, big hole up the middle again, crashing through the defensive secondary to the. 15-yard line goes Joseph Hamilton. He's got some speed on him. Yeah, it's pound football right now. They're gonna they found something on the left side, on our right side of our defense. They're running straight at Eddie Walls, which is surprising because he's the anchor man on that BCU defense. First and ten of the 15-yard line. First trip to the red zone. It's a jet That's sweep me. off the left-hand side. Flags fly everywhere. Demke Colbert was. The man that got the false start. It is a false start. Number 17. Five yard penalty. First down. Only the second penalty of the game. Tigers have the back that bank up. One of the things that we liked about Bethune Cookman's performance at Memphis was their lack of penalties. Only five penalties committed by Bethune Cookman. And there was no silly penalties. No procedure penalties, none of that stuff. It was it was all holding and, and the like. Yeah, when I did my scouting report to my friends who called for the, you know, report on the game, the first thing I said was. A disciplined football team, no penalty. First down and 15 now from the 20. Adams takes the snap, throws to the far side in one-on-one -on -one coverage, incomplete, well overthrown. Iverson yes, Clement was back there in coverage, guarding Brent Carr, and it is second down. Correction, Deshaun Mitchell was the receiver target. They can pick up a first down at about the five-yard line. They can, because the first down marker, or the Original first down marker was at the 15. 9.18 to go, first half, no score. 
Second and 15. Second and 15 from the Wildcat 20. Savannah State trying to open up the scoring here. Snap to Adams. He rolls out to his right, has all day to throw it over the middle. It's a one hand. No, he dropped it. Flag in the second play. Randy Scott was at the goal line. It looked like he was going to make a spectacular twisting one handed catch and just dropped it they, at the end. There was a Wildcat player down in the middle of the field during the play. They might call a pick, an offensive pick. I saw the receiver from Savannah State with his hands on his helmet. They might call him for a pick. We are. Are they going to pick it up? Test it, test it. We'll see. I, I saw one of the officials signal for pass interference, but we don't know who it's on. There was a Wildcat player down in the middle of the field during the play. Let's get the call. There is no foul. Foul for some pass interference. There is no the foul. The result of the play incomplete pass. pass Third down. They were trying to call a pick on the uh, right receiver for Savannah State. They're going to pick up the flag, so it's going to be what, third down? Third down and 15 from the 20. The Wildcats can hold them to a field goal try here. I think they'll be pretty happy. After Savannah State was set up inside BCU territory by a fumble by Corey Turner on BCU's last possession. Five wide, three receivers left, single right, timeout, Savannah State. Timeout. Time yep, Savannah, Savannah State. State. Coach Aaron Kelton calls timeout. We'll take one with them. Third down and long for Savannah State when we come back. This is Bethune-Cookman University football on the Cat Eye Network. 1380 WELE The Cat, streaming live at 1380 WELE The Cat dot com. Check, check. All right, we got a new chant. I want y'all to get them. We need you to sing along. Let's go. It go like this. B B C U. Wow, Cat. Down and twenty for Savannah State. B C U. Wow, Cat. I need y'all to do it. B C U. Savannah State trying to break the seal on this nothing nothing ball game. Two receivers right, two left. Adams stands in the pocket. Now he's forced to escape to his right. He's Got gonna it. go down for a sack. And there's a flag late on the play. Dearest Thomas made the tackle. I wonder if that's going to be a targeting call. It can't be because he took him out with his, he took out his legs. It's going to be against Savannah Hole. We hope. They're backing up. Okay, so they are backing up. I want. Well, I wonder if Bethune Cookman might decline the penalty and make it fourth yeah, down. I would decline that. Make it a fourth down. If you see, you see the coach all the way on the field talking to the officials. That's Raymond Woody Jr. in his first season in charge. A 1996 graduate of Bethune. Personal foul. Call. Illegal blindside bomb. Outfit, number 39. On Third down. They are backing him up. Make it a longer and longer field goal. So now it was first and 10 at the 15. Then it was second and 15 at the 20 after a false start. Now after a number... Third and 20. Ball's on the 35-yard line. Got to hold them here. Got to hold them. They're going to go five wide again. Three receivers to the left, two to the right. Adams in the gun alone. Nothing. Three down linemen for Bethune-Cookman. Nothing cheap. Make them earn it. Snap to Adams. He's going to throw it quickly underneath. The pass is caught by Zaire Williams. Oh. He spins out of a tackle. He's going to be cut down right where the... Savannah State Tigers were before the previous play at the 20-yard line. Here comes the field goal team. They are really leaning on Zaire Williams, the junior out of Greenville, North Carolina. He's now rushed six times and caught a pass in this first half. He broke a tackle, man. They, they had him stop. Picked up an extra four or five yards for the field goal. Kicking for the Tigers. This is Kenneth Lockhart. One for one on field goals last week. This will be a 30... Seven yarder from the right hash. Snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is on the way. It's spinning to the right. No it good. is no good. no good. There is a force no field good. around the right side <laughs> goalpost here at Daytona Stadium and Larry right, Kelly Field. Bethune Cookman's missed a Wildcat field goal to the left. And now Savannah State has missed a field goal to the left. 
well, the defense, like we've been talking about all year long, has been growing up. They play a stellar defense, causing Savannah State to go back and the first and goal at about 15 hours. Now, three penalties on the drive from Savannah State did not help the Tigers cause that time. Good spray back in the game. Next spray in the game. Ball the 20 yard line of Bethune Cookman going right to left. Three receivers right, single left. Sprague going to toss it out on a screen pass to Terry Lindsay, and he's going to lose a yard. There's a screen play. right to Lindsay out of the backfield. Good defensive stand by Savannah State. Sprague passed over 2,300 yards last year up in New York at Nassau Community College. He can really spin it. Led the NCJAA in yards, completions, and completion percentage. Sprague on second down and 11. He's going to toss it over the middle. It is incomplete. Just a little bit low and behind Tink Boyd. Pass incomplete. And that's going to be third, third and 11. He had Boyd in the middle of the field because he'd made that late cut against the corner. Just a little bit underthrown. And nobody can really get anything going here for Bethune Cookman on offense. So what do you do here for 11 yards? Got to run a curl, I think. A curl or a slant. Sprague in the gun. Lindsay to his right. Three receivers left. Single right on the near side. On the uh, short side. Ball on the right hash. 7.30 to go first half. Still scoreless here at Daytona Stadium. Sprague claps his hands. Takes the snap, looking, throwing to the slant. It's caught over the middle of the field to the 35, pushing forward to the 40. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Still going past the 40, down to the 42-yard line. That's one of the super twins, Cameron Overton, making his first catch of the season for the first time. I didn't even have him on my two deep. Let me write him in. That's one of the super twins of the, of the Overton brothers. His tight end brother, Khalil, here's a pass screen to the near side. That's complete to Corey Turner, but a loss of three yards on the play. I know they're going to say it's incomplete. Oh, oh, Illegal substitution. Corey Turner has had a tough game oh, in this first half. He, he caught the same screen earlier and fumbled the ball. Then he dropped the ball. No, they're going to say it's a catch, and they lose three yards back to the 40. That receiver has to hold his block. Down there, you got trips to the look to the, to the near either, side. Either that, or it's a it's a penalty that I didn't see, because the referees are congregating at around the forty yard line. Four of the six referees are talking to each other. I guess maybe the discussion is: Was he out of bounds when he caught the ball? And came back in. And came back in. Back like last week. That same we, play happened yeah, last we, week. We've we had a legal touching call like that last week. That uh, took a first down off the board for Bethune Cookman. We had multiple first downs taken off the board after review last week. Let's see what the call is. Illegal substitution. Yep. Defense. Stepped out of bounds. Five yard penalty. Oh, they call first down. On, uh, Savannah. Illegal participation. I, you rarely see illegal participation called on defense. Is there 12 men on the field? 12 men. Okay. They must have had 12 men on the field. They I still think. have 12 men on the field. They have 12 now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They do have twelve men on the field. So and now the referees are confused about how far to back them up because they were going to give them ten yards in a first down. Now they're giving them five yards to the forty-seven. This is a bit of a cluster going on right now. Now they have eleven. So now they will spot the ball at the forty-seven yard line. So it will be second. And what, five. Second and five. After the five-yard penalty, two receivers stacked to the left, sing, uh, two receivers stacked to the right. Hand off up the middle. Lindsay gets nothing. One yard, if that, up to the 49-yard line, third down. Lindsay with a carry, gain of one. And after early on in the game, the rushing attack for Bethune-Cookman was the way to go. The interior of that Savannah State defensive line has really clamped down on our interior runs. Look for Sprague right now to air it out. Third and five. Once again, two receivers to each side. They're bunched up by the numbers on the near side and spread out wide to the far side. One man in motion. That's Turner. He goes from right to left, making it three, to three receivers on the left side. Pump fake. Now he throws underneath. The pass is caught. 
and getting his helmet ripped off is Cameron Overton. He's close to a first down into Savannah State territory they, at the 47-yard line. They're marking it as a first down. It's going to be close. They're going to call it a first down. It is a first down for Bethune-Cookman. Their first. No, no, it's going to be third and one. Third and, wow, third and one. That's a tough call. Because the official looked like his foot is past the, the yard marker. It's a third it's a and a foot. Th third, yeah, third, third and an inch. No, they gave him the first down. Now okay. they gave him the first down. Uh, the, the way he was marking it, he was already past the, the yard marker. The officiating crew is having a bit of a drive right now. A little bit weird. Okay, first and ten for Bethune-Cookman on Savannah State side of the 47. Handoff up the middle to Lindsay. Lindsay. He falls forward, gain of two to the 45. He'll give him three to the 44. Let's pause 10 seconds for station ID. You're listening to Bethune-Cookman University football on 1380 W. Wildcat Nation, yeah, let's get loud. We marching. Wildcat fans, let's make some noise. Sprague in the gun. Second down and seven from the 45. Sprague pump fakes. Pressure from the backside. He's going to float open. it up. Wide open. Get the tanny over through Jawan Boyd. Jawan Boyd had a touchdown, but the pass was just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, Tink did a stopping go on the defender. Broke free just a little bit overthrown. I appreciate going for the home run ball, but now it's third down and seven. This has got to be four down territory for us. Just outside of field goal range, ball at the 44-yard line of Savannah State. Bethune Cookman going right to left. The referee comes in and makes sure Savannah State can match the substitutions. Now we are ready to go. Three receivers, two right, single oh, left. Hell, Sprague takes the snap, going to throw the same pass to the far side, pass interference. He was looking for Davino Wellington that time, and the receiver, uh, the cornerback, excuse me, was all over him. Elijah Norwood. Basically pushed him out of bounds before he could make the play on the ball. Yeah, Davino, the wide receiver from Panama City, ran a little juke right there, and then at the 30-yard line, hands on his shoulder pads, called pass interference. Well, they're not moving the ball up yet. I wonder if they're going to pick up that flag too. There's a flag down on the far side. That was offsides first. Well, yeah. So there's two penalties on the play. So I wonder if they're going to have to declare. There are two fouls on the play. Both by the defense. Offside. On the first down. Defense. The so penalty offsides declined. is declined pass and the pass interference, pass interference is offense. accepted. Good catch. 15 yard penalty. I didn't I on that saw down. Savannah State. First down. I didn't see the official throw the flag. It's actually a free play. So that that's and a, the pass interference helped us out. I think that's why well, that uh, spray went noise. down the field. Because on third down, you don't want to chuck yeah. it like that unless yeah. you're gonna get the free play. Bethune Cookman with their second best drive of the game inside the 30-yard line of the 29 of Savannah State now. Right to left, 4.55 to go first half in a scoreless ball game. Sprague in the gun. Claps his hands, takes the snap. Pressure comes. He's going to throw it over the middle. It is incomplete mm. in and out of the hands of Davino Ellington. Ellington took a shot from Elijah Norwood. Same player that uh, made the pass interference call in the last play. He makes a nice play there to knock the ball out of Ellington's hands. He drilled that one right onto the hip. Davino got to catch that one. BCU offensively just a little bit discombobulated in this first It's okay. It's first a work in progress. Game. It's a work in progress. Trying to find their rhythm. Second down and 10 from the 29. Two receivers right, one to the left. Sprague takes the snap, throws it short over the middle. That time it is caught by Ellington. He turns up field to the 20. Powers past the 15. And it takes five Tigers to bring him down at the 13-yard line. First down, Bethune-Cookman. Davino's a little, little short guy, but he's a possession receiver. He's great across the middle. He's great on curl routes. And he's great because he's been here four years. Davino, Davino listed at six feet even. I think that's being a little generous. Now first and 10 of the 13-yard line. Sprague inside handoff. Trying to make a man miss is Bivens. Bivens right through the middle. No, it's Drew Bensley Bazool. Fires forward. Touchdown Bethune Cookman. Touchdown Maroon and Gold. The Wildcats are in the end zone on offense for the first time this season, and they have the yes, lead. Sir. Yeah, that little short guy right there made a move on the defensive back, and defensive back lost a shoe on the play. First touchdown of the season for the Cats on offense. Broke the seal on the end zone. Apologies to Javensley Bazool. But he made a nice stutter step oh, yeah. at about the 10-yard line. Made it, shook a defender literally out of his shoes. <laughs> and the Wildcats lead 6-0. Cade Hector, extra point. 
This time he makes it count. And the Wildcats have a 7-0 lead with 4.14 to go in the first quarter. You saw Sprague come in the ball game with some rhythm. Hell Drove the team down the field. Was helped by, aided by some penalties. We saw a balanced attack running Hell and passing. We found that rhythm that we wanted to see from these young men. But you put the defense in a position to make those penalties, right? If, if you're just being conservative and running up the middle every time, they're not going to – you can't get pass interference calls. You can't get big holding calls because you're not putting the defense in a compromising position. What you did, you, you had Davino Ellington, the re possession receiver, called a couple of great passes down the field. Once you go vertical, that's what we need to do. Trying to find the drive summary for you. 12 plays covering 80 yards in three minutes and 48 seconds, ending with a Juvensley Bazool touchdown run of 13 yards. Bazool, that's the kid from Washington State, he right? He is the Washington State. And we were talking before the game that uh, we had a baseball player last year, uh, Highland Hall, also transferred from Washington State. They knew each other back when they were in Washington. So a co cool little connection, cross-country connection, if you will. We got a little royalty in the box. That's Roger Jackson, former defensive back for Bethune Cookman and the Denver Broncos. He and his wife, they're in town watching the ball game. Hector kicks this one off right to left. Ball's going to bounce at the two-yard line. They're going to take it out to the 10, to the 15, 20, right up the middle, bouncing mm. it left side, 20. Trying to get to the 25, he does, close to the 30, and finally pushed out of bounds is the returner. That was A.J. Brown on the return for Savannah State. Good field position for the Tigers. 4.05 to go, and now... The defense has been playing well all day. Yeah. Let's see if they can come up and get a stop here before halftime and it, give the Wildcats the lead. Absolutely. Let's see these young guys. They're jacked up right now. Let's see what happens. You see Amari is out there along with uh, Love. They're going to go to the air. Yeah, uh, they got to. Four minutes to go. They're down now. You can feel kind of the dam has broken on the Bethune Cookman off. I mean, we won't see that till next possession, but you kind of get the feeling in the stadium. First down and 10 from the 30-yard line. Savannah State in the blue helmets, white jerseys, blue pants, going left to right. Adams takes the snap. He's going to hand the ball off the middle, and it's going to be a two-yard run straight up the gut for Joseph Hampton. We've seen Quarles in there. Quarles has been great. Absolutely great in this first half. Let me see if I can find some numbers. He's a young kid out of Tampa. He, um, his dad, like I told you before, is the, the – uh, Director player personnel for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so he knows football. Only one tackle credited. That was his second. Oh, that's about his third tackle. <laughs> but he has been playing great, doing great things in the run stopping as well as rushing the passer. Second down and eight now at the 32. One man goes in motion. That's Deshaun Mitchell, right to left. Adams the snap. He's going to take off and run on a quarterback draw. 35-40 all day in the middle of the field. Slides down to the 49-yard line. First down and a lot more for Savannah State. They are inches away from midfield. He went to the weak side that time. A lane opened up. He just took it up the middle. Slid down for the first down. Not sure if that was a designed quarterback draw or if it was improvisation from the dual threat quarterback at Islands High School. And they're still going into the huddle. 2.54 and counting. All three timeouts left for both teams here in the first half. Once again, Mitchell in motion. Hand off up the middle. Nowhere. Nowhere to go for the running back, Joseph Hampton. The Wildcats shot back there, and Amari Jones made the contact for a three-yard loss. There is a flag on the play. We're going to call it legal procedure, I think. We've already had 12 men in the formation. Illegal shift. State State Two men in motion at the same time. Number time. 17 and 43. Offense. Five-yard penalty. But it is a five-yard penalty. We're going to refuse, we're going to refuse the penalty. It'll be they decline the penalty. So it, was it illegal? Was it 12 men in the formation again? Because <laughs> what other penalty by the offense? Decline. Five -yard decline. Penalty yeah. Doesn't yeah. stop the play. Because the only one I can think of is false yes. start. Stop decline. the play. Penalty is declined. They might have had 12 men in the formation again. Either way, oh, they, moved it, right? they moved him back five yards to the 44, and now it's Let's second down and 15. Adam with two receivers right, single left, tight end to the left. It's going to be a play action going deep down the field. It's going to be caught. 
at the BCU 30-yard line by Brent Carr, a diving catch. Big first down, Savannah State, and they are in business with 2.20 to go in the first half. They call Amari Hill Robinson on the play action that time. Brent Carr, over 2,000 receiving yards in two high school varsity seasons. 37 yards and a touchdown receiving last week. Jet it's a jet sweep. sweep to the left side this time, and once again it goes nowhere. Randy Scott got the handoff, and he is buried for a loss of three yards. Three yards off on the play. He's just always been playing tough like that. Jalen Christian made the tackle for Bethune yeah. Cookman. And a lot of young guys. 143 and counting now. Still 7 0 Wildcats. Tigers sniffing the edge of field goal range, but they're backed up behind the chain. Second down and 13 at the 31 yard line after the loss of three. Still three receivers to aim at with Hampton sidecar right. Adams takes the snap over the middle Ooh. of the field, deflected and caught. Wow. Ball was Savannah State got really lucky. Julian Roberts caught that ball after a massive deflection in the middle of the field. I thought it was going to be picked off. I think it was Shelton Quarles got a hand to it. That was Quarles again, number 20 on the tip. I thought he was going to intercept that pass, but man, sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. First down and 10, Savannah State in the red zone at the 18-yard line. Looking to tie this game up before the half. 110 and counting to go. Adams takes the snap, looking, throwing short over the middle. The pass is caught at the 20, moving to the right side, to the sideline, to the 15, flipping over a defender to the 10-yard line is Demke Colbert for a nine-yard gain, second and one. Amari Hill Robinson was the last man on, on the defensive side. Came up and laid a blow. And that big play to Brent Carr seems to have unlocked a little bit in this BCU passing defense. 42 seconds left in counting in the first half. Still 7-0 Wildcats, but the Tigers are knocking on the door. From the nine yard line, Adams floats it to the end zone, incomplete. He was looking for Brent Carr, who was matched up one-on-one -on -one against Omari Hill Robinson. Robin Robinson, of course, this is a very similar situation where he picked off a pass against Mississippi Valley State last season and ran it 100 yards to the house from what was the, still is the longest interception return for a touchdown in Bethune-Cookman history. Yeah, they're picking on the All-American, the All-Swack performer. First team All-Swack last season, first team All-Swack preseason this year. Eight interceptions in his Bethune-Cookman career. He's matched up all the way to the right side against Carr. Three other receivers in the formation, two to the right, two to the left. Handoff up the middle, big hit right through the hole. No gain on the play as Hamilton took the carry and Dearest Thomas was right there to make the play, although his helmet did come off. He's gonna have to sit out a play. Yeah, Thomas has made stunning tackles. Like that. It's gonna make a fourth and one. So what do you do, you kick the field goal or you go for the first down? I don't know. And uh, neither does Savannah State as they are deliberating heavily on the far sideline. The clock is not running, so I think they might have taken a timeout. This clock is running. They're coming oh, for the now, field goal. Now they wind the clock. 18 seconds. The clock is running. The field goal unit is coming on. Kenneth Lockhart has missed a 32-yard field goal wide to the left. I think they're, they're going to let the clock run down to five seconds and then take the timeout. Five, four, three, timeout. Savannah State, and they're going to kick with uh, the last play of the first half. Well, Savannah came out and answered that touchdown by the Wildcats. They, they drove it 70 yards so far. They've driven it 70 yards so far. And let's see right now. Current plays, drive is nine plays, 60 yards for Savannah State. Please put five seconds on the clock. The field goal attempt that was no good was a 32-yarder. This will be a, maybe a 25, 26-yarder. It's a chip shot. Please put five seconds on the clock. Remember, coming up at halftime, okay. you're listening to us on 1380 WBN in the cap. We're back to the studio with Harold Ford. And half
halftime report from Dan Ryan on the 1972 Wildcats football team in the SIS Championship. Robert McLaren, daughter of Coach Jack Simon McLaren, talks about the campus changes that could make at halftime. If you're watching us on the Canada Network on YouTube, you will see the halftime show from both the Savannah State fan and the Marching Wildcats. Here we go. Canada's Lockhart, a relative chip shot. This will be from 24 yards away. Make that 26 as they back him up, back, back the uh, holder up a little bit. The holder is Demke Colbert. And Bethune Cookman isn't even in a isn't even in three point stances on the defensive line. It looks like they're just gonna let them get away with this one. Now both teams are standing up as we have a reset, delay here. Reset the uh, reset the play clock to right. twenty five. But to, some of the Please officiating in this first half, like the, the calls, the penalty calls have been correct, but there have been some weird spots. Some weird timing miscues. Five seconds on the clock here, which means we probably will have a kickoff after this uh, field goal attempt. Well, look for the fake, too. Kenneth Lockhart with Colbert holding at the 22-yard line, make it a was it the 16-yard line, make this a 26-yarder, and it's going to be timeout. a Bethune-Cookman Bethune timeout. Cookman. But, you know, there's a new rule. You can't call back-to-back -back timeouts, but the other team can call the timeout. Yeah, so... Savannah State called a timeout to stop the clock. Bethune Cookman now called a timeout to ice Kenneth Lockhart, which it, it, it seems a little silly to me. Yes, Savannah State does get the ball after halftime. You have the lead. Walk me through what Coach Woody is, is thinking about kind of making that decision. Coach Woody right now is using this moment as a teaching moment. So what we're going to try to do right here is probably here try to do a, a block. Here we go. Possibly a block, or you can set up something where you could get somebody open to come through. You got some fast guys on the end down there. Let's see. You got Lamar Hill Robinson in, and you have uh, Clement on the other side. So let's see what, what happens. Clement is on the left end, Robinson's on the right end. We're going to set up once again at the 16 yard line, making it a 26 yard field goal for Kenneth Lockhart. 0 for 1, missed a 32-yarder ride to the left earlier in the second quarter. Made one of one field goal last week against Southeastern. Snap is there. The hole is good. The kick is straight down the middle and good. And the Savannah State Tigers, as the time hits triple zeros on the clock, are on the board. We have hit the end of the first half in a very low-scoring contest here. It's the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats 7 the Memphis this Tigers the three, or excuse me, Memphis the Tigers. Savannah State Tigers three. <laughs> we play five different teams named the Tigers this year. We got the Jackson uh, State Tigers Memphis, coming up. Memphis, Savannah State, Jackson State, Texas, Texas Southern, Southern, and Grambling State. So I'm just going to say Tigers, and most of the time it's going to be right. You know, we saw a great defense in the first half. We saw the Cats defense made some stellar stops, and we saw Savannah State play some tough defense. Offenses started trying to move a little bit. Here in the second part of the uh, second quarter, let's see how the second half comes out. Here are some first half stats. BCU has nine first downs to Savannah's eight. Rushing yards, 54-49 in favor of Savannah State. Receiving yards, 98-93 uh, in favor of BCU. So the stats very even, even across the board all the way down. Some individual players to look out for. Jalen Adams, quarterback for Savannah State, 8 of 17, 93 yards, has taken one sack. For Bethune Cookman, Luke Sprague, 6 of 9 for 59 yards. The Wildcats, one Good touchdown did come evening, from and a gentlemen. rushing touchdown by Javensley oh, Bozeal, a 13-yard affair. His only carry we are of the, the game. The most active ball carry for Bethune Cookman Free. is Jimmy Robinson. Six carries, 30 now, yards on, your seats. Staple on down those the knees. ground. Because For Savannah State punches, rushing the ball, the it's going to be Hampton. Seven carries, 33 Powerhouse yards. Adams, three carries, South. 26 yards, helped by that one 15-yard run up the middle on a draw as the Savannah State band gets set to give their halftime performance, we will send it back to the studio and join Larry Steele.
and the WBLE studio for all your halftime needs. Remember, that can only be seen on 1380 WBLE The Cat. If you're watching us on the Cat Eye Network, stay tuned right here for halftime band festivities. You're watching the 2023 Bethune-Cookman University Wildcat football season on the Cat Eye Network. Today, the powerhouse will present a precision drill to the legendary group, New Edition. And now, with style and grace, let's bring on the majestic dual dancers with Poison by Bell Biv DeVoe.
getting ready to groove with the Cynic Classics. Rub you the right way, my prerogative. And if it isn't love, if you know the word, sing along. Under the direction of Dr. Gabriel Arma, <laughs> Director of Bands, Assistant Director, Aubrey Grimm Simmons, and our auxiliary coordinators, Takia McIntosh and Remy Clark. This is your 2023 edition of the Powerhouse of the South. Bethune Cookman, we thank you. A Wildcat football from the hallowed grounds of our beloved Bethune-Cookman University and the spirit and legacy of one of America's most inspirational daughters, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, whose DNA is intricately woven into the tapestry of our nation, an HBCU tradition of excellence, champions, undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champions. The only band in the world that's guaranteed to show up and show out the Marching Wildcats of Bethune, Cookman University, the pride. The fanfare, Drake, over. From the pantheon of drum majors, the heartbeat of the pride, icons, legends, power, houses, inspiring, amazing, the fabulous five, the five horsemen. Smoke. Smoke never rises without fire. It's showtime and we the show. The drill, get down on it, cool in the game. And before I let go, be unpaid.
14 karat gold. They screenshot you, talk about you in chats, put you in reels, and now they call you the swag of the swag. The dance, the power, the soul. 14 karat gold dancing to Christina Aguilera. Ain't no other man. All other games starting later today in the SWAT. Allen State goes to Miles. Stephen F. Austin goes to uh, host of Horn State. Arkansas Pine Bluff away at Tennessee State. University of South Florida plays host to Florida AM. and Look out for that game. Rattlers could cause a little bit of a scare for the uh, South Florida Bulls. Jackson State against Southern in Baton Rouge. Fairview a and hosts Adeline Christian. Allen and m hosts Lane. And Louisiana State hosts Rambling State. All those games to come. Your score here at Bethune Cookman University, the BCU Wildcats 7, the Savannah State Tigers 3, as the BCU band entertains all of Wildcat Nation. We actually have a very good crowd out here. In concert formation, we take you to the intersection where love, lust, and romance intertwine. The year 1976, the movie Car Wash, the R&B group Rolls Royce, the 1995 remake Mary J. Blige, the song I'm Going Down. Top tight ends and receivers playing for Savannah State. And we played them in the old Gator Bowl back in Jacksonville. So it's going back a home and home series now. We went to Savannah uh, when we, our last two years in the, in the MEAC and we won the last two ball games. And they defeated us in 2019. A good measuring rod right now for the Cats. Early in the season, we got a short week. We go to Miami on Wednesday and we play Thursday night. So good measuring rod for the offense. We've seen spray come in and kind of move the football. A couple of college football scores from around the top 25. Penn State beat Delaware 63 to seven. Notre State, Notre State. Notre State beat South uh, North Carolina State 45-24. Utah beat Baylor 20 to 13. Kansas State beat Troy 42 to 13. Colorado all over Nebraska 36-14. Youngstown State lost to Ohio State 35 to seven. Georgia beat Ball State 45 to three. Charleston Southern had a 14 to seven lead against Clemson at the end of the first quarter. It's now 66. To 17 uh, in favor of the Tigers. Tulane on top of Ole Miss, 17 10 in the third quarter. That is my game of the day. Where are they playing that game? At Tulane. This is, this is ball game. Directed by the regular bands, Dr. Donovan B. Wells. From the chief music of the Maestro, James Potier, Wildcats. Let's go. Let's do this. That Tulane Mississippi, Mississippi game was my game of the day outside of here at the third quarter. I hope to win pulls that out. Michigan all over UNLV 28 to nothing that game's in the third quarter. Texas AM is up on Miami 17-14. That game will just We're about to drop three, drop three musical joints in a row. Starting with Grammy nominated Lotto. Wildcats. Turn around and put it on the floor. That game has been delayed. UNC and half state. Still nothing. But the most important score for at least the left-hand side of this press box, James Madison, 36, Virginia, 30. Rip me out the blessing. I've been, been at this brand, brand new. new. Show it up, show it up. Yeah, they were down. There was a big weather delay. They were down 35-21 and then scored the, the last Awarded the Billboard Rising Star Award, Award out of Tampa, Tampa Florida. Florida. Don't see what it is. Go back and lose that game, 36-35. I'm going to have to go back and Jamie Grad having a happy first time in 40 years. The big games coming up tonight. Duke hosts Lafayette. Oklahoma hosts SMU. Oregon is at Texas Tech. And I love them. Now it's time to drill them down. Drill them down. Drill them down. Washington hosts Washington. Wisconsin hosts Washington State. Florida State has Southern Miss. Oregon State has UC Davis. And USC plays a stand. That is around the college football world once again. Let me see some footwork. Halftime show. Texas Southern is down to Toledo in the third quarter, 50-3. All other games to start later in the swag. Alabama State hosts Miles. Stephen F. Austin hosts Alton. Tennessee State hosts Arkansas. Arkansas. South Carolina hosts Florida. The only conference game of the weekend is Southern and Jackson State. The game that we're going to have our eyes on pretty closely as we go to Jackson State. Now, Fade! Psych! Besides the Jackson State.
A performance masterpiece. Jackson State sucks. It stands out to me because if Jackson State loses, they're done. They will have one conference loss already. They'll have two conference losses. And they will have to win the Eastern Division. And Southern was also in the Western side. Southern lost the most ball game last week with Alabama State. That's the key matchup for me. To me, it's got to be South Florida and Florida and I think the Rapids can cause oh, yeah. the Bulls to be in a problem. The marching Wildcats of Bethune Cookman University. We practice like we always win. We perform like we never ever lose. I don't doubt that um, Florida AM, if they don't end up going to the Celebration Bowl, will be in the FCS playoffs come the end of the year. They, they are very good. For the last few years, they've been they've been, they've been snug, but looks like they're on track to win the swag. Somebody has to derail them. And I don't see anybody doing it. Of course, we get Florida a and all the way at the end of the season on the 18th of November. A long way, can happen in that long ball. way to go until then. Let's turn our attention back to this game. It is seven to three Wildcats over the Tigers. We've got about five minutes to go to the second half. The BCU marching Wildcats just finishing up their halftime performance down in front of us. We've seen not a lot of offense out of the Freeman Cookman until the very end when Luke Sprague came in the game. The spread came in with a, with a little bit of a step. Came in and threw the ball vertical down the field. Had some nice timing routes. Missed a couple of long passes down the field. But he moved the football. They had a few first downs in the drive. Uh, also some penalties. But something about him and his rhythm has given us a spot. Around the side. On the defensive side, the Wildcats were good on the Tigers to three. But they've been put in some tough spots by a couple of poor offensive drives and a couple of tackles. He has one Jalen Christian, the cornerback, came in, didn't start, but came in and made that one nice play for his sack. Uh, Omar Hill Robinson, three tackles, Jones, Omari Jones, three tackles, Tyron Franklin, and a bunch of others have two. But uh, the, the Wildcats kind of got wore down there at the end of the first half defensively because at the beginning, they were g giving Savannah State nothing. But towards the end of that first half, they kind of the same as against Memphis. You've been on the field for so long, you just kind of get tired. And I think we got caught in a bad package, too, because we were rotating our defensive line, and I think we had the wrong guys in on that long pass play. But what stands out for me right now on the stat sheet is Luke Sprague. Going back to Luke Sprague, 6 out of 9, 59 yards. Jimmy Robinson, 6 carries for 30. There is some spark in the offense. These are, these are some kids that are growing every week. It's a process. I like to see a little bit of more growth here in the third and fourth quarter. And I think you have to keep it simple. If you're a uh, Bethune-Cookman offensive mm -hmm. coordinator, Dante Pimpleton and uh, Joe Garbino, you have to keep it simple, especially for Sprague, a guy who's not had a lot of minutes, played, you know, eight snaps against Memphis, played half the second quarter here yeah. today. Keep it simple, screens, slants. I think we got a little bit in trouble when they started throwing deep and got into some uh, trouble that Savannah State bailed us out on with a couple of penalties. And Sprague's only been here since July. He's, he's a latecomer, and uh, I think Roger Jackson, who was in the booth, was saying he wants to see them open the offense a little more, and I was saying, no, it's a process. These kids right, right here are learning on the go. There's going to be times when the offense will be more efficient than what we're seeing now, but you gotta, you got to give them what they can do. You, anytime Sprague comes in, you're going to see the ball go down the field. We saw that uh, w Walter he was throwing the, the tunnel screens and running the RPOs. Spray comes in looking for those receivers down the field. Both special teams units had a bit of uh, interesting first half. Both kickers, both Cade Hector for Bethune-Cookman and Kenneth Lockhart missed a field goal wide to the left that would have opened the scoring for their respective teams. And then, of course, the, the punting was um, 
interesting as well. Oh. Tulin, two punts, 42 yards, average of 21 yards per punt. And then, of course, for Savannah State, Lockhart, four punts, 137 yards, averaging 34 yards a punt, which is uh, not a lot better. Well, Tulin's had 12 punts on the season. I think he shacked half of them. But when he gets his foot into it, he can really kick the football. So I think right now it's a nerve thing and a learning curve for him here in the SWAC. Hector 0 for 1 on field goals. As the teams are both back out onto the field and going through their warm-ups for the second half. About a minute to go left on the uh, halftime clock. Once again, you're listening to the Bethune-Cookman University football halftime show here from the broadcast booth at Daytona Stadium. Larry Kelly Field in beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida. That little bit of a rain shower that we had earlier today has passed us by. A couple of wispy clouds in the blue sky today, but uh, no more threat of rain. The crowd has stayed past the uh, the band oh, performance yeah. in the second half. Student section a full good, up yeah, good over crowd. to our, now, now our that left. Now look down into it. It's a great crowd. Savannah State didn't travel all that much from Georgia. But they got a couple hundred people over there. And, of course, the mm -hmm. band made the trip and performed very well at halftime right. as well. Kate Hector runs out for the Bethune-Cookman kicking unit in the maroon helmets, black jerseys, maroon pants, gold numbers with gold stripes along the shoulders, the Bethune-Cookman University interlocking BC logo on the sleeves where the TV numbers would normally be. Savannah State now trots out to receive the kick. Blue helmets with a white face mask, white jerseys, blue pants, blue numbers with orange trim, an orange stripe down the middle of the helmet, and the Tiger Head logo on the helmet for Savannah State. Cade Hector getting set to kick the ball off. A.J. Brown and Joseph Hampton back deep to receive. The ball is kicked toward Brown. He's going to let it bounce at the five-yard line, pick the ball up. Out to the 10, running on the right side to the 15, dragging defenders to the 20, and he will be still pushing his feet, and now they're going to stop his forward progress right there. You want to see the defense right now be opportunistic. What I mean by that is last week we saw them pick off passes, pick up fumbles, and run with them for touchdowns. So you want to see them right now try to get, put some points on the board themselves. We have a visitor on the window of the broadcast with a little wasp like an alabama state hornet <laughs> <laughs> we'll see them in, in four weeks don't wow. get the, don't get too far ahead of ourselves there Darryl. that thing is huge <laughs> now they can't get in here thankfully so here comes the savannah state offense they'll set up at the 21 yard line ball on the right hash going right to left the sun which is setting to our left now right in the faces of the savannah state offense Long shadows starting to form as we have hit late afternoon here, 541 Eastern Standard Time. Need a big play right here from the defense right now. Jaden Adams in the gun, takes the snap, looks to throw under pressure from many walls, throws it over the middle, leaping pass caught by Deshaun Mitchell near a first down marker. They're going to give him 10 exactly to the 31 yard lines and move the chains. Yeah, that's a little pitch and catch, a little quick slant across the middle, picked up 10 yards for the first down. That's, I think, the kind of pass that Bethune Cookman on offense kind of yeah. starts to start running. We should run some slants with the speed we have. First and 10 for Savannah State from the 31 yard line going right to left. Just 30 seconds gone here in this third quarter in a 7 3 BCU lead ball game. Adams hands the ball off up the middle. It's breaking three, and up towards midfield is Joseph Hamilton. He crashes down at the 47 yard line. Gain of 20. Yeah, Clement, the last guy, the safety, made the stop. Savannah State going quickly at the 47-yard line. Play action over the middle, wide open. The receiver, Mitchell, into BCU territory at the 45, upended at the 32-yard line. Another deep pass connection for Savannah State. They are quickly approaching the red zone. Yeah, the play action is killing us right now. They dive to the fullback to the fullback in the slant pattern. First and 10 for Savannah State at the Bethune-Cookman 33. Adams takes the snap. It's a screen to the far side caught by uh, Brent Carr. He's going to dive forward for about five yards. 
Iverson Clement made the tackle. We're gonna, we're gonna face our front four, kind of wind it. We have been doing that all game long. Walls, Deontay Washington and Adrian Hall and Amari Jones come out. Educate Brown, Conroy Cunningham, Ebenezer Dibula and Jefferson LaFontaine come in on the defensive line. Good looking drive for Savannah State right out the shoot. Second down and five from the 28 yard line of Bethune Cookman. This drive started at their own 20. Handoff, Hamilton bounces it through the middle to the 20 yard line and the Wildcats have no answer for this running attack right now. First down at the 20 for Savannah State. Good looking trap to the right side that time. You had two guys pulling from the left side, leading them through the hole. Savannah State has the momentum right now. Savannah State on this drive, pass for nine yards, rush for 17 yards, pass for 20 yards, pass for five yards, rush for 15 yards. And they've got set up first and 10 at the 21 yard line of Bethune Cookman. Defense looks a little shell shocked right now. Yeah, they do. They look like Memphis in the third quarter. Adams, this time fakes the handoff. He's going to be run down for a sack. They tried the RPO, quarterback kept it, and Bethune Cookman's defense was all over it. Ebenezer Dabula was in there to make the stop. Yeah, Dabula stayed Holmes, stayed gap. Right there, stopped him. Dabula, a redshirt junior from Canada, transfer from Minnesota State. Second down and 10 at the 21 yard line after the no gain on the play. Adams hand off to Williams inside on a draw. Williams falls forward to the 17 yard line, pick up a four. Big play here, third down. Third down and six now for Savannah State. Important for Bethune Cookman to hold them to a field goal try. Eddie Walls is coming back for the defensive line. You wanna watch that slant pattern. It's been working. It's been complete to Deshaun Mitchell. And the is a little gimpy, too. He He's hurt his knee the last time he caught a slant. He's Mitchell all the way to the near side left of the formation. Two receivers left, one to the right. Ball on the right hash. Adams takes the snap. Play action. He's going to run with it, and he's upended back at the 20-yard line. My God. D. Aris Thomas once again. DT. His second sack of the ball game, and it's fourth down and 13. Here comes the kicking unit. DT came through clean that time, and the quarterback tried to, was flushed out of the pocket, tried to step up. DT was right there to stop him. Man, oh man, De'Aris Thomas is good. We got a bunch of linebackers that's playing good this afternoon. De'Aris Thomas up to nine tackles on the game, and out for the field goal is Kenneth Lockhart. His field goal was the last action of the first half. It's gonna be a 36 yarder. It is floating in good, barely. That was a waffling was ball, tipped. not kicked very well, but it does limp over the crossbar. And with 10 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter, it's the Bethune Cookman Wildcats six, the Savannah State Tigers, should be, the Bethune Cookman Wildcats seven, the Savannah State Tigers six. That drive for Bethune Cookman. For Savannah. Nine, or excuse me, for Savannah, nine plays, 59 yards. Took four minutes and 42 seconds off the third quarter clock and ended with a 37 yard field goal from Kenneth Lockhart. It's, it's time for the offense to respond. What do you think they're going to adjust at halftime to make those make that response? We saw some open pass plays uh, earlier with Miss Bray came to the ball game. You might want to go back to some of those some of those looks into the flats. He missed a couple of receivers and Ellington caught a couple of curls and slant patterns. You want to do almost the same thing Savannah State did, nickel and dime. Darnell Dees is back there to receive the punt. Juvensley Bazool, who had the 13-yard touchdown run, the only points for Bethune Cookman in the ball game in the second quarter, is also back there. Dees to the right-hand side, Bazool to the left-hand side. They both stand around the five-yard line. Ball set at the 35. I'd like to see Darnell get one and take it all the way. No returns so far today for Bethune Cookman. Kenneth Lockhart has the ball on the tee. He runs up, swings his right foot through it. And Bethune-Cookman now up just one. Dees takes it at the goal line. He's going to run it out to the 5, to the 10, to the 15. Makes oh. a man miss, 20. Has a cavalcade of blockers, 25, 30. Through the far side, he's pushed out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Great return cross field for Darnell Dees. That is why you don't kick to him. That's what we want to see. Darnell has been biting. 
a, a bite at the chomp right now, chomping at the bite, and whatever you want, however you see it. To return one, he got it up across the 33-yard uh, line at the 34, so it'll be first and 10 for the Cats. Luke Sprague back out on the field as the Bethune-Cookman quarterback. Bazool in at running back. Two receivers to the right side. That's the Kari Allen Johnson and Jawan Boyd. No receivers to the left. The ball's on the left hash. 10.01 to go in the third quarter. 7-6 Wildcats over Savannah State. First possession of the second half for Bethune-Cookman. Snap to Sprague. He has time to throw. He's going to throw it to the far sideline. It's caught at the 35, turning up field 40 to the 45, finally pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That's Davino Ellington. Davino's a head and senior, a leader on this ball club. He's a res leading receiver returning for the Wildcats. Also a basketball and track athlete at the high school level. He has got wheels. First down at the 48-yard line, Sprague. Oh, All day open. to throw. Down the numbers. It's complete. J1 Boyd inside Savannah State territory all the way down to the 35. That's the play that I alluded to earlier when you asked me what we should, should we be doing. Tink Boyd right down there in the flats wide open. That's the first play we ran to begin the Let's ball game. And I didn't believe you when you said vertical, vertical, vertical. Guess what they've done? First two plays. Two big passes. Now Bethune-Cookman set up at the Savannah State 22-yard line first and 10. They've completely flipped the field. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle to Bazile. Juventus Bazile breaks the tackle let's go, let's go. inside the 10. Put it on the board. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. Juventus Bazile with his second rushing touchdown of the game. This one from 21 yards away. Juju is running the football and rolling hard. He looks like he wants to tote that rock. So two touchdowns on the afternoon. And what a switch up from the offense. They're going hurry up pass, hurry up pass, hurry up pass. They hit him with the interior run, and the defense was not ready for it. Spriggs came in with a great tempo. Cade Hector on to attempt the extra point. Right now, 13 to 6. And that is the kind of drive That's how you answer, guys. that we needed. That's how you answer. A young club comes right back after a field goal, and you answer that way. Low snap, bobbled. It it's still good. gets up there and good from Cade Hector. Ethan Dettilio, the local quarterbacking product out of Matanzas High School, is the holder. And Bethune-Cookman takes a 14-6 lead here in the third quarter. Now you got to play defense. Now you got to stop that offense. The last two times they've had the football, they've driven it down the field on us. But the defense didn't break. They've been, but they didn't break. How about that? The drive started on BCU's 34 and took just 48 seconds. That's the best looking drive on the year. Oh, of course. Three plays, 66 yards, and a 21 yard rushing touchdown by Juvensley Bazile. He is listed at fourth on the running back depth chart, and yet, and yet, he's got two carries and two touchdowns. So we played four running backs, so running back by committee this afternoon. But I'm just excited about Sprague, how he just moved the ball down the field, found the open guys, and the guys seem to rally around him, and, and they play at a different level of speed when he's in the ball game. To me, that is a statement drive, both from the offense as a whole and by Luke Sprague. It's to prove it to the coaching staff that I've got the arm, I can yes, make the throws. Yes, sir. Kickoff from Cade Hector. Back deep to receive is Randy Scott. Mm. Scott, big hole up the middle to the 30. One man to beat, and he's dragged down to the 36-yard line. Almost a big return there for Randy Scott. Kickoff team hasn't had an opportunity really to uh, play much. We, we scored two touchdowns last week, and they gave up big yardage on the returns. And this afternoon, they're giving up big yardage on, on the two returns. So we have to shore up Coach DJ McCarthy's special team. I know what Coach McCarthy's going to be doing in practice uh -huh. all week long. Right. But it's a short week. Yeah. How do you kind of prepare for a, a Saturday yep. to Thursday They'll week practice like tomorrow. They'll do a walkthrough tomorrow. They'll practice tomorrow and Monday. Tuesday will be in shorts. Wednesday they will do a walkthrough in the morning. Then take a bus down to Miami and be ready to play on Thursday. Savannah State now finds themselves down 14 to 6. They get the ball on their own 41-yard line after a really nice, excuse me, 36-yard line after a really nice return by Randy Scott. Adams once again in there at quarterback. 
He's got Zaire Williams, sidecar left. Hand off to Williams. Whoa. Williams is blown up in the backfield and immediately dropped. How about that from Devin Harrell, the linebacker? Our linebacker play, like I said before, those guys have been playing stellar this afternoon. Devin Harrell looked like a hot knife through butter getting through that <laughs> offensive line. Oh, Nothing a, was stopping him from getting to the running back. That's a great cliche right there, hot knife and butter. And I'll tell you what, Zion Williams has been kind of their rumbling big playback. Mm -hmm. That time he was cut down well behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of five on the play. Back to the 33-yard line, snap to Adams. Here comes the rush, he dumps it off, oh. short over the middle, caught by Deshaun Mitchell, running free to the 45, to the 50, cut down at midfield. Yeah, they, they brought him underneath the linebackers on a shallow square in. All, all the guys on the other side slanted this way, he's wide open. First down, Savannah State, that was a great looking play. Iverson Clement once again makes a potentially touchdown saving tackle, his last man back there. The Wildcats have not defended that crossing slant route. That's Very the, well. That's the route you're seeing everybody run. That's the same route TCU ran last, last week on, on Colorado and kept killing them on that underneath route. So after the big loss on first down, a big pickup on second down means it's first down it's and real. 10 from midfield right at the BCU logo. Snap to Adams. Adams under pressure. Dumps it off short to Williams. Williams in the middle of the field, close to a first down to the 40-yard line. Let's see where they spot the ball. He was tackled by Deontay Washington. I think Savannah State is deep into their playbook. They're running some plays the last three times they've had the football that's really getting them some yardage. Defense has the hold tight right here. And again, we're not getting the defensive pressure from the front seven that we were in the first half. And that's allowing Jaden Adams time. They're going to give him the first down at the 40-yard line after a 10-yard pickup. Man comes in motion. Adams. On a wide receiver screen to Scott, all day, 40, right side, 30, tumbled out of bounds at the 25-yard line, a 15-yard pickup and another first down for Savannah State. See, we're, th we're throwing the tonal screen, and they're using their back for the tonal screen in a great block by the receiver, Mitchell, that time, to, to allow him to get the first down. Randy Scott, a senior from Savannah, had 30 yards receiving last week against Southeastern. Another first down for Savannah State. They have marched this all the way down the field into dangerous territory. First and play. 10 at the 24 yard line. Two receivers stacked up to each side. Adams takes the snap, has to roll to his right. Holding. Walls is chasing him, a flag is down. He throws the ball incomplete to the 10 yard line. I agree, that is a hold. Is Big bowl hold, hold from Kyle Frazier, the right tackle. Oh. Yeah, you know, that was pressure oh, coming from both sides. Flushed him out of the pocket. One, the, one guy came straight up the middle and he was held. Gonna back him up 15. Yeah, good. Again, we need that kind of defensive pressure. And Eddie Walls, I tell you what, there might not be a more terrifying sight in all of sports than Eddie Walls running at you if you're a quarterback. That play won't show up on the, on the stat sheet, but his rush, he had a delay and moved through the middle, caused him the whole way. It'll be first down now and 20. From the 34-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Got two guys out here and nobody on the second. Okay, there here comes the safety over now. Mitchell motions Underneath. left to right. Paul batted in the air at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Eddie Walls got the hand up mm. and we got uh, uh, Damari Jones flashbacks there. Well, Damari said in his interview that there's a drill they do. They call it matched hand. So when you see the quarterback raise his hand, you raise your hand. And he matched, he matched the rays of the quarterback, and he batted that ball down. That's a drill that they do. Once again, Eddie Walls all over Kyle Frazier on that right and tackle And that would spot. not show up in the stat sheet. It'll show up as a pass deflection. Second down and 20 from the Wildcat 34-yard line. If they hold him here, they could be out of field goal range. Five wide, three receivers right. Two to the left, three down linemen for BCU. They rush an extra guy off the edge. Adams has time. He's going to float it down the far sideline. It is incomplete. Overthrown, looking for Brent Carr. Going to bring up fourth down here. Let's see what they do. They're two. Well, they may go. They may go for it right here. It's third. Looks like go no. It is third down. Let's get third down. It's third Let's down because that first play down. with the holding went back to first okay, down. So it's third down. down and twenty. Okay. Going to dial up something right here with you with your guys up front. You got Amari, Amari's in there, along with uh, Adrian Hall is there, Hall. and Eddie Walls, the front three, the first team unit for the front three is in there. Three receivers right, 
One to the left. Adams in the gun. He takes the snap. Four man rush. Rolls, Rolls to, to his right. Roll. Hall in the backfield immediately and forces an incompletion. Once again, Eddie Walls disruptive as you can be. And with 6.13 to go, it's going to be fourth down and 20 for Savannah State. That's the defensive stand you wanted there. Yeah, Jalen Christian also was bringing some pressure. He was held. He's a nickel bike out of Lakeland High School. He was a dreadnought out of Lakeland. Lakeland dreadnoughts, state championship caliber program every year oh, yeah. down there. I played against them in high school, but they had a great program back in the day. They're going to get the offense on the field here. Fourth down and 20. Oh, no, it's their punting. Punt, 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 excuse me. Lockhart punting. He's going to get the punt off from the BCU 45. High get arcing towards get the near corner. It. It's fair catch. It's going to be. Uh, so, yeah, yeah flag that, flies. Fair catch interference. Yeah. So, Zachary Allen Johnson called for the fair catch, and I don't and couldn't see who was down there, but somebody for Savannah State just straight up caught the ball. They're going to call fair catch interference. I don't think I've ever I've seen that. I've never seen that before in football. <laughs> you see something new Ever. every day in this line of work. I tell you that. I mean, I, fair catch. There were two guys around him. And somebody from Savannah State just stepped in front, stepped of, him. In front of him and caught the ball. <laughs> you know, but because you work on that, right? Mm -hmm. With short punts like that, you work on catching the ball. <laughs> So they'll move Bethune Cookman up. It's about the 27. And is that a 15 yard, 15 yeah, yard penalty? 15 yard penalty. So they'll move them up. We'll see where they spot the marker, but it's going to be at the 27 yard line. Let's see what Sprague does. Let's see if he keeps the hard hand right now. We keep continuing to throw the ball down the field. He works well with Tink Boyd. Last time, last time BCU was on offense, 48 seconds, 66 yards, and a touchdown in three plays. This time Sprague with three receivers left. Single right. Dakari Allen Johnson moves to the wide side out of the backfield, making it a five wide in the formation. Four man rush. Sprague steps up. He's going to run. He's going to run to the 30. Tries to make a defender miss. Fall forward to the 32 yard line. Nice. He's not the most yeah. elegant runner, is he? But he Sprague, knows but where to go. He, he, you're right. He, yeah. he read the defense and found mm -hmm. the hole, picked up five yards. Most quarterbacks would have ran up the middle and slid. He kind of dipped to the outside, picked up a couple of extra yards. He picked up what? Almost. What? Like, I think they're crediting him with four yards on the five. play. They gave him five. Yep, five yards on the play. Second Wait. and five for BCU from their own 32-yard line. Three receivers bunched to the left. Pink board. And one, one to the near side right. Pink board. Plenty of time in the pocket for Sprague. He fires over the middle. The pass is caught by Dakari Allen Johnson. He takes a big hit. It's close to a first down. And they will give him. Uh, is, six yards for a first down to the 37. What you're seeing, is he's going through the progression. He looked left the first and nobody was there. He came back to his secondary receiver out of the backfield. Correction, it is still a first down, but they're at the 38 yard line, not the 37. Same formation with three receivers to the left. Play action, Sprague down the middle, caught by Allen Johnson in traffic at the 50. Wrestled down inside Savannah State territory at the 48 yard line. Seeing the Wildcats turn the pages in that play, but we, they rolled to the right, brought a receiver behind the, behind the wide receiver, and Dakar Jackson's right there in the flat. DAJ had two catches, but no net yards last week. The He's having man. himself a pretty big second half. A little man from Jones High School in Orlando. Two receivers stacked up to each side. Hand off to Bazil. And Bazil's going to lose two yards back to midfield. Nice defensive pressure there by Savannah State. Yeah, we're just trying to keep him honest there with the run. Amir Phillips made the tackle. The sophomore out of Savannah, Beach High School. Behind the chains, now he lost two on that play. Yeah, Amir Phillips' dad was a former defensive tackle at FAMU. So he knows the swag very well. And an... Offsides penalty, free play. Spray gonna throw it deep. It's gonna be caught at the 25 yard line. Running inside the 25 to the 23. It's Davino Ellington on a 
Hail Mary, not a quite a Hail Mary, but a long bomb on another free play. It was almost like a back shoulder throw. Davino saw the ball was underthrown. It was a free play. He came back to it, made the catch. First down for the game. Second offside penalty of the game. Second free play that the Wildcats have capitalized on. And once again, they have quickly gotten into uh, scoring range here. They're at the 24 yard line of Savannah State. Great looking drive right now. Great looking drive. We're in it out. In just four plays, they've gotten all the way down the field. Two receivers stacked up to each side. Ball on the left, Tash. 3.30 to go. Snap to Sprague. Pressure comes. He's got to throw it away, and he does. Just ejects it into the Savannah State bench. Smart play. You know, the offensive line, he had a leakage, and he just threw it away. Try to not lose any yardage on the play. We're in field goal range now, so great looking throw that time. Second down and 10. And I wouldn't mind the Wildcats going to the run here. They did the score the touchdown on the run on the previous drive from about this far away. 21 yard run. They're at the 23, second down and 10. It is Juvensley Bazool, sidecar left to Sprague. Two receivers left, none to the right. Tight ends, both set up to the right hand side. You may touch it on this drive. There he goes. It is, no, it's a play action over the middle, underthrown and incomplete. He was looking for that quick slant across the middle to Tink They're Boyd. Call the late flag. There is a flag. Looks like an offensive lineman downfield. Oh, they're calling pass in the field. Are they calling? Wow. It was tight coverage that Tink Boyd was in with the Savannah let's State let's defender. See. Let's see. Here's the call. From home cooking? No, a legal man downfield. A legal receiver downfield. We had a guy, we, we did have a guy a step downfield, but hey. We've seen it all in this third quarter. <laughs> 307 to go in the third. Wildcats gonna face a Are they gonna decline it? Give us a second down. An eligible player downfield. Offense. Yeah, now the referee Pimple. officially makes second the call. Still second down. Still second down, so it's okay. hey, negates Gucci. the play, which hey, was an incompletion. Right, Give us more room. Throw the football. So they'll back us up to the 28-yard line. Now second down and 15. Two receivers right, three Jimmy, to the left. Jimmy Robinson's in the game. Robinson in the game. Sidecar left at running back. Sprague claps his hands once, now twice. Changes the play. Now backs right back up into the gun. Defensive line shows pressure, but they only rush four. Sprague to the near side, caught... And down close to the 20-yard line is Davino Ellington. That'll get 10 yards, so it'll be, now I'll give him seven yards on the play. So it'll be third got, down. Got a little ruckus on the field. Yeah, a little bit of extras after the play. No flags, though. Yeah, there's a flag. There's a flag. Oh, yeah, I there's do see the flag. The, the, the referee was blocking my view of the flag. Now it's got to get a little bit chippy. Hold him. Defense, Defense, number 97. I think Ten yard penalty. That. Automatic first down. Eric, well, you reset the play clock. The so game the clock Wildcats once again bailed out by Savannah State penalties. See, we used to play that way. We used to Please get teams three to all the penalties building up teams clock. up. Now we're seeing the other side of the coin by us being more disciplined on offense. We've seen uh, Savannah State being penalized. Please put three Everything minutes on the game clock. That is seven penalties for 70 yards for Savannah State. We'll take it. First down, BCU inside the red zone. 2.43 to go, third quarter, 14-6 Wildcats. Get a first down at about the nine. Ball spotted at the 18-yard line, need the eight for a first down. Jimmy Robinson still in the game with Luke Sprague in the shotgun. Corey Turner and Davino Ellington with the receivers on the right side. Boyd and Ellington on the left side. As they're holding up the plate for some reason. That Please looks put like the referee wants to make another announcement. On the game clock. I don't I didn't see a flag. And everybody's just standing around. We're in position, but the linemen are standing up. The the uh the back the head linesman is is over our center holding up the play. Now he goes to the line. Okay, late. We, we're going to send a receiver in. No, late send sub Lindsay. Terry Lindsay on for Jimmy Robinson. Okay. First and 10 for the Wildcats from the 18-yard line up 14-7. Three minutes Come even on, to go in the third quarter. Now we, we're ready for play. 
I guess maybe it was a substitution thing. Too long for substitution. I don't know. Either way, here we go. Four-man rush. Sprague takes the snap. Looks over the middle. Low pass oh, is caught. What a reach down and a grab for Dakari Allen Johnson. He stumbles forward inside the 10 down to the six-yard line. The little flea out of Jones High School went down and caught, caught it off his shoestring. Yeah, that looked like he was about six inches off the turf. Wow. When Johnson made that catch. First down. First and goal at the eight. Sprague lofting into the back left corner of the end zone. Flag on the play. That'll be pass interference. Now, that looked to me like the ball was uncatchable, in all fairness, to Savannah but State was, corner but it was a hold, though, DeAndre like Creary. He held him before on the break. Let's see, let's see, what they, let's see if they wave it away. And now we're going to have another long consultation with the referee crew. I, I think these long referee they talks have, have been... Up. There is no foul for pass interference. interference. But I the ball was uncatchable. The referee crew has been the majority Second of the time that we have wasted here in this game. Been a very quickly played game otherwise. 2.33 to go here in the third quarter. Second down and goal from the eight yard line. Thune Cookman up 14 6, trying to increase their lead and pull away here in this third quarter. And it's important to go quickly because in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. they'll have their faces to the sun. Swing pass out of the backfield right here. Just one receiver each side. Jimmy Robinson back in the game. One man in motion. It is Robinson up the middle, trying to drive his way through the defense. Gets to the five, just a one-yard gain. He hit up in there. He just didn't get the yardage. Third and goal, what do you draw up here? You want to throw a swing pass out of the backfield into the flat right here for the score. It's four down territory. I would go for it here if you don't make it on third down. 2.05 to go and counting. Spray gets the play in from the sidelines. One receiver to the right, that's Allen Johnson. One left, that's Boyd. Third and goal. Sprague rolls left, throws to the back of the end zone. It is a touchdown. leaping catch for the touchdown. Dakari Allen Johnson. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. Touchdown, fella. Maroon and Gold. <laughs> the shortest guy on the team went up and got it as he crossed from left to right in the back of the end zone. Yeah, the little fellow went up. This, 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 he made four key catches on this drive, but more importantly, Fred, look poised in the pocket, roll to the left side, let him clear in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. And he had a defender staring him down for basically the entirety of that play and just kind of stood there, stared down the defense, waited for somebody to get open in the back of the end zone. Eventually, he found Dakari Allen Johnson. Hector's extra point is up and good with 144 left to go in the third quarter the wildcats have opened the floodgates it's 21 to 6 over the savannah state tigers we'll come on bad Day. station id this is bethune cookman university football on cata network 1380 w e l e Michael Trevillo and Daryl Latio live from the broadcast booth in home sweet home, Daytona Stadium at Larry Kelly Field. Well, Wildcats have opened up a 21 to six lead with 144 left to go in the quarter after a four minute and 21 second drive ended with a Luke Sprague touchdown pass to Dakari Allen Johnson. I think Coach Davino licked his finger, turned a couple of pages in that playbook. We saw a great drive. The last, matter of fact, the last two times we've had the football, we've driven it over 80 yards down the field. But Luke Spray, he's growing up. The transfer from Nassau Community College came in and did well. Short kick, fielded to the 30-yard line, up to the 40-yard line is where the Savannah State Tigers will start. That was Brent Carr, the wide receiver, the kind of unwilling recipient of that short kick from Cade Hector. He, got a, he took a blow, too. The head. Now it's time for the Wildcats to once again step up defensively. They had a decent stand in their own territory at the end of the last drive to force a punt out of Savannah State, push them back out of field goal range, but it would kind of feel good to get now, a three and out here. You gotta, you gotta play tough, you gotta play tough right here, get the offensive ball back with, with some momentum. Because Savannah, 
They're going to nickel and dime us now. They're going to really put it up in the air. Savannah State's been moving the ball, especially to Deshaun Mitchell on crossing routes. They've hit that a couple of times. Here we go. At the 40-yard line is Savannah State. Adams claps his hands, takes the snap. Looks to throw. He's going to throw deep down the middle. It's going to be caught at the 50-yard line and to the 45-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. That's Brent Carr. That's been there all day. That little slant cross the middle. It's been there all afternoon. And Adams, when he's had time to sit in the pocket, he's found those routes. We've been the most successful when we've got pressure on him, forced him to roll, and forced him to miss his spots. They'll spot the ball at the Bethune-Cookman 46-yard line. Adams with five receivers to aim at. Three left, two right. Ball in the middle of the field. Adams takes the snap. Under pressure from the backside. Moving receivers around. Throws the ball way out of bounds into the Savannah State cheerleaders after pressure came from the backside from Adrian Hall. I think we have, I think if you get some delayed pressure on him once he rolls out of the pocket and you see that, that safety come up, that's the way you play that because we force him to throw that ball out of bounds that time. That's the way we've beaten him. We just mm -hmm. force him to roll out of the pocket, force him to take that extra step and lose timing with his mm -hmm. receivers. And bring that guy on a delayed blitz to force him to throw it. Adrian Hall, Rockledge High School, a transfer from Tennessee Tech, came off the edge that time to apply the pressure. Second and 10 from the BCU, 46. One man in motion to the backfield. Adams, quarterback draw all the way, lunges forward to the 39-yard line. They'll spot him at the 40. Yeah, his knee hit down at the 40. He lunged past the 40 up to about the 38, but his knee touched down early. Here comes Quarles back into the ball game. Big third down here for the Cats. Adams has six carries for 26 yards so far today. Third oh. down and four. Ball spotted right at the 40-yard line. Watch the slant pattern right here. Need some pressure. Receivers two by two. Full back in the game as well. It's going to be a handoff on third and five. Whoa. Absolutely nowhere to go for A.J. Brown. He was wrapped up and dropped for a loss of one. Back to the 41-yard line. Big number 44, Adrian Hall out of Rockledge. Made that stop. The former Rockledge Raider and Tennessee Tech Golden uh, Eagle. Yeah, he went to Tennessee Tech. Yeah, he made the stop. Fourth and six. And looks like they're going to call a timeout. Nope. It's the end of the third quarter. Let's we'll step Wildcats. aside when we come back. Put your fours up. Four it's time for the final four frame. Four Wildcats 21, Tigers 6. You're four watching Bethune-Cookman University Football on the Cat Eye Network. And listen. The end of the third quarter. Welcome back to the fourth quarter here at Daytona Stadium. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats lead the Savannah State Tigers 21-6. My name is Michael Trevillo, Daryl Latiel alongside me in the BCU broadcast booth with Savannah State facing fourth and five from their Bethune-Cookman 41-yard line. They are going for it on fourth down. One receiver in motion, that's Demke Colbert right to left. Sets up three receivers in a triangle formation on the left-hand side. Underneath. Adams throws underneath, it's, it's dropped. dropped. It was a straight drop by Brett Carr. He was wide open, and he would have had the first down if he'd caught that. He about to score because he came underneath that time, and nobody was in the flats. Yeah, that was a turnover on downs for Bethune-Cookman, and then it wasn't really the defense that got it. It was a miscue by Brent We're Carr. We're taking it any way we get it, buddy. Yeah, Brent Carr from Warner Robins, Georgia. Warner Robins, best known sporting-wise for Little League Baseball, put a bunch of teams in the Little League World Series over the years. Well, Sprays comes back out. He's 13 out of 18 for 166 yards so far. And crucially, six of his last seven. 
Wildcats at their own 41 going right to left in the black and maroon with gold numbers here in this fourth quarter. Sprague slant to the near side. That's going to be the running back out of the backfield getting no yards. Jaden Bivens, first time we've seen him since quarter number one. He had to throw that earlier than he wanted it because that's a wheel route for the running back to come out and swing. He had to throw it early, and he only picked up two yards. If he had more time for him to swing out, he could have got down in the flats. 14-33, half a minute gone by here in the fourth quarter. Wildcats with a 21-6 lead. A double clap of the hands, but no snap coming. Who's that back in the backfield? That's 33. It's Jaden Bivens still back there. Three receivers to the left, single right. Ball in the right hash. Four down linemen for Savannah State. Just one middle linebacker in the game. That's Anthony Gaskin. Four-man rush, Sprague. Surveys, looking middle, caught at the 45-yard line to the 50. Ripped down at the Savannah State 45-yard line. Right across the middle, there's Corey Turner. A little bit of a redemption after he fumbled earlier in the game. Corey Turner, a little wide receiver out of Cedar Hill, Texas. Trinity Leadership Public High School. We got two 5-7 receivers. Dakari Allen Johnson and Corey Turner. Snap to Sprague. Screen to the far side. It's Turner again. Makes a man miss at the 40. Falls forward to the 42-yard line. Nice little quick yeah. beat there. He's going to be trouble, man. Between him and Dakari Allen Johnson, those two little water bugs. A couple of substitutions defensively for Savannah State. Wildcats pick up six on the play. Have second down and four at the 39-yard line. On, Three receivers it. left, single right. Get them with the hammer right here, guys. Turner is the middle of the three receivers to the left. Flanked by Ellington and Boyd. Sprague this time takes the snap. Plenty of time. Now he pocket breaks down. He's got to escape. He's got room to run to the 40. Going to the 45. Tackle from behind at the 40. Picked should be the, the 35 yard line. He did pick up the first down. They spotted it at the 34. A bit of a generous spot, but we will take it first down BCU. And you see his guys run and help him up off the ground. Second rush for Luke Sprague. He's, he's got some agility out there when he chooses to scramble. He's going to be smart with the football. He's very smart with it. Now just three receivers to aim at. One in motion. That's Ellington. Ellington's going to get the screen out of the backfield after a motion. Uh, a helmet flies off as Ellington is tripped up for a loss of three back to the 38. you got to make that block on the, on the cornerback. you got two receivers out there. You throw that ball, it's almost a tonal screen, but Davino Ellington's coming in motion. You got to hit him in stride, and the DB came up and made the stop, lost the three yards. That was Alik Booker, whose helmet came off on the play for Savannah State. He's got to sit out of play. Omari Stort now in the ball game at wide receiver for Bethune Cookman. Two receivers left, none to the right. Sprague looks that way, throws across the middle. Nice job over the middle on the flag. defensive side. A flag does come out. That was Jamerson Pettiford that knocked the ball away. And this, this, this flag was off the ball, so let's see what they call. It didn't look like pass interference to me. Like a blow to the head. I saw the, uh, the, the, the back judge. Go to the uh, pass interference. Yeah, Defense pass number interference, 14. Though. The ball will be placed in spot of foul. Automatic first down. First down. Another, another BCU first down on a Savannah State miscue. We'll take That's been the modus operandi of this offense. Just kind of take where you can get. I've seen us do this last couple of years. Well, I love to see it done to us. First down and 10 BCU at the Savannah State 29-yard line going right to left. Try to increase this 21-6 lead. Sprague, handoff up the middle to Bivens. Bivens runs into a wall at the second level, gets only three yards. And that's what's been missing today is a really solid middle rushing game. It's the one piece of the puzzle that's not fit. Offensive line is still jelling, but they've been great pass blocking. Their pass blocking has been flawless this afternoon. Especially it's just that run blocking. Especially once Sprague came into the ball game. Mm -hmm. It's the timing. It's something about his timing and the way he sits in the pocket. Second and seven. Sprague rolls to his right. He immediately has a man in his face. He dumps it off to the tight end to Manye Moore. Moore loses two yards back to the original line of scrimmage at the 29. It'll be third down and 10. The sophomore from Statesville, North Carolina to Manye Moore. 
I think later on in the season, you'll see something countered off of that play right there. We won't run it now, but you'll see another play countered off of that play just now because the cornerback is coming up fast. Third down and 10 from the 29. Three receivers left, one to the right. Bivens in it, running back, sidecar left. Two hand claps to try and draw Savannah State offside. Now the line changes the play. It's actually Jimmy Robinson in it, running back. Just one middle linebacker once again. Gary Davis, snap to Sprague, he looks, he throws, the slant, it's Ellington. caught at the 20 yard line, Ellington breaks the tackle at the 15, running to the 10, he's got a blocker in front of him, to the five, tumbled down at the one yard line. What a play got by Davino Ellington, there is a flag down late and it might be coming back for a hold. I looked away from the backfield the minute he threw the ball, but where that Base flag man. was from. Offense, number 72, 15-yard penalty, third down. So a 28-yard reception that would have put BCU at the one-yard line on third and 10 is negated by a face mask, and now it's going to be third and 25 all the way back at the 44-yard line. That's a killer. Yeah, that's one of, one of our only penalties this afternoon, too. I think it's only our second or third penalty. I'll double check on the stats. It's only our second penalty. So we've played pretty clean, but that's a pretty costly yeah. one. Third and 20. You're about to kill a mosquito with an ax right there. Two receivers each side this time. We got... Lower depth chart guys now on the field for Bethune Cookman. They got three. Lewis Kirschkinger is on the field. Sprague, middle, caught at the 45 to the 30. And down inside the 30 to the 27 oh, yard line. That's Corey Turner again. Corey Turner again, and it's fourth down and seven. He's five foot nine, 136 pounds. The offense is on the field here. Yeah. On fourth and seven. They're gonna, no, nope, they're going to kick it. Here comes the field goal. Here comes the field goal unit. Yeah. I thought you're up 21-6 uh, with nine minutes and 20 seconds left. There's, there's like no reason to go too. for I this. I want him to hit this one. This will be a 45-yarder for Cade Hector. He missed one earlier in the game from 32. Doinked it off the left upright. That was going to the right-hand upright. This is attacking the left-hand upright. Hector. Kicks this one. It's, it's on good. the way. It is good with plenty of room Beautiful. to spare. How far did you say he was making him from in the pregame? He was making him from 52. So 45. Easy pickings for Cade Hector. And the Wildcats take a 24-6 lead with nine minutes to go. Well, Savannah State starts their SIAC slate next week. They host Clark Atlanta. Then they'll play Albany State in Brunswick, Georgia in a, a neutral site game. Home against Edward Waters at Fort Valley at Central State versus Tuskegee versus Benedict and then at Lane College to close the season. You know, when I played college football at Bethune Cook, when we were in the same SIAC conference and we played Savannah, we played Albany, and we played uh, Morris Browns, and, and then in my junior year, we moved to the MEAC. And the MEAC was a, was a different brand of football. I still love the MEAC, even though it has been dissolved a lot. Now we're playing swipe football. And, th and it's been said there is a different level between playing in the SIAC and playing in the swipe. There's uh, a different level of football. And we've seen it in this second half. It was it was close in the first half, very defensive game. Neither offense could really get going. But once Luke Sprague took the reins at quarterback, it's been all Bethune-Cookman here in half number two. You got to make sure the defense plays well here and don't, don't lay down. They notice they do play Central State on the 14th of October. Central State knocked off Mississippi Valley State last week to open the season. Mm. Oh. He's, he's kicking it short. It is going to be a short kick from Hector, fielded at the 20-yard line up to the 25. Left side, 30, makes a man miss. 32, and tackled to the 33-yard line. Did the ball Bumble. come out? The ball came out. Bethune Cookman has it. Wildcat football. Let's see if they give it to us. Yep, turnover. Somebody is celebrating big down there. It's Steven Sparrow who recovered it. Steven Sparrow came in. Let's watch the replay on this. I don't think they're going to get Well, yeah, no, we, we are going to get a replay here in our monitors. No, we're not. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fiatra, for the monitors, guy. 
Spend that money, buddy. <laughs> so Bethune Cookman takes over after the fumbled return. I did not catch who was on that return for Savannah State. My apologies, but all we need to know is that Luke Sprague is back on offense. Let's get that touchdown that we missed on the last drive. Let's look good, guys. They're pretty much in the exact same position they were in at the 34-yard uh, mm -hmm. line. Sprague is back in at quarterback. We got the fullback out there with half of the paint of his helmet chipped off. You see that silver glow off of uh, Khalil Overton? It's Khalil Overton, the tight end. He's got some serious paint chipping on his helmet as he stands just behind the offensive line. Yeah, he does. The line now takes their three-point stance. Just one receiver out to the left. Expect a heavy dose of running here from Bethune-Cookman. It is going to be an interior handoff. Lindsay. Breaking arm tackles. Lindsey falls forward inside the 30, and they'll mark him at the 29-yard line. Now, you've seen these kids now playing with effort. They're playing fast, they're playing smart, and they're playing aggressive. I mentioned that last week, and that's what Coach Woody teaches. Five yards on the play by Lindsey. They'll move some pieces around on the offensive line. Keep Lindsay in the backfield, but four wide receivers. Three left, one to the right, ball right hash. Spray, quick throw to the right-hand side. Caught, nice little out route, and a catch for Davino Ellington. First down, Bethune-Cookman at the 24. You know, we were watching the Florida A&M game last week against Jackson State. In the first play of the game, you saw a kid wearing number four, Marcus Riley, take the kickoff back to the touchdown. This kid right here, Ellington, has stepped up and taken over. Riley, as our top receiver. Yeah, Riley last year was the top receiver at Bethune-Cookman. First and 10 from the 23-yard line, officially, where they spot the ball. Once again, four receivers for BCU. Three left, single right, ball right hash. 7.47 to go in the ball game. Sprague, again, looking for the exact same eight-yard out, and it's caught oh, by Ellington again. I like what I see, guys. I like, the, I like the way we're nickel and diamond, running the down and out. Not showing much, but watch for the hook and go this time. Seven-yard pickup that time to the... 17 yard line, second down and four. They marked him a bit shorter than where I thought he went out of bounds. You can tell this Savannah State defense yeah. is getting pretty gassed. Yeah, they're laying down a little bit. We could have scored here. Rick. Ellington in motion, handoff, oh! Lindsey. Nice cut up the middle. He spun down a first down BCU at the 12. The little guy came through there and he showed some muscle running up the middle. Ellington, he's a small kid too. He's what, five foot? Uh, he's no, 5'11", 185. Yeah, that's Terry Lindsay on the last carry. Uh, he made a nice jump cut in tight space to get free there, too. He was a high school teammate of, uh, let's see what happens here. First and 10 of the 12. It's going to be a pass play for Sprague. He's got all Let day. Now he rolls out of the pocket, throws it deep to the end zone. Out of the back of the end zone, just kind of threw that one away as he was being chased on the back there. end. Fair play to the Savannah State defensive line. They have not given up. That was Josh Dorsonville on the pressure. Sprague has been heady all afternoon. He He's thrown the ball well, and he's thrown it away when he needed to. to and he scrambled a couple yeah, times. Scrambled a time, not, not to take that, that loss of yardage. But win field goal range, at least. And just play safe here, second and 10 from the 12. Running ball up the middle. Lindsey still in the ball game at running back. It is going to be a Sprague pass. He's got time. He throws to the end zone. It's touchdown. a catch right over the middle on a post route. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman. Touchdown, Maroon and Al Gold. Dakari Allen Johnson. Dakari Allen Johnson again. I didn't mean to step on you, but <laughs> <laughs> that kid, man, is playing a heck of a ball game. He took that interior post route and did a beautiful job shielding the defender as the ball came to his hip right down the middle. And another good drive put forward by Bethune-Cookman in this second half, and um, they have what? pulled away from Savannah State here. That was Tink Boyd. Was it Tink Boyd? That was number three, Tink I, Boyd. I thought it was Dakari Allen Johnson yeah, when he came the off catch. the field, I saw the three, so it was Tink Boyd. Uh, no, they've got Dakari Allen Johnson on the stat sheet. Okay. Thirty-one to six. Six forty-one to go in the ball game. Wildcats over the Tigers, and we can finally 
breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief up here in the press box. It looks tight for a while, especially in that first half. I got a smile on my face for one reason. I'm watching these kids grow. It's a process. Everything ties Joy back Grant. to the yeah. Grant was a, a cheerleader at BCU. Hector kicks off right to left. This time he boots it deep. It's going to be Scott from the end zone. Out to the 10, left side 20. Makes a block to the 30, tiptoes the sideline, pushed out near the 40-yard line. Scott's been pretty good on that return crew for Savannah State today. They've got some good field position to start out. Yeah, our return is, uh, has to do some work on that. When we do that pooch kick, we, uh, we stop it better than we do on the long kick. The VCU connections to Savannah State run deep, and it starts at the top. Opio Marsharaki, yeah. the One athletic director yeah. at Savannah State, former student at Bethune-Cookman, mm -hmm. former sports information director yes, at Bethune-Cookman, and now the AD. athletic director yeah. over there at Savannah State. So uh, we wish him and his team well throughout the rest of the season. So we saw something that you usually don't see in college football. They came down day of the game. They drove down this morning. We've got Christian Burks in the game now at quarterback for Savannah State. This will be his first collegiate snap. He takes the snap at the 30-yard line, throws it on a out route near side near the 40, caught for a gain of eight by, uh, guess who, Deshaun Mitchell. 17 with a reception for the Tigers. Mitchell, 57 yards receiving plus those eight on the game. He has been the best offensive weapon that Savannah State has had, and it's time to see the redshirt freshman from Bremen, Georgia, step up for Savannah State here. The running back is Zaire Williams. Two by two go the receivers, ball in the middle of the field. Three down lineman for BCU. Burks takes the snap, hands off to Williams, right through the middle, nowhere to go. Did not gain anything. Pulled backwards by the BCU defensive line. And we're pretty far down the depth chart for Bethune-Cookman here, too. That's Jeremy Greaves who made the stop. Third down and three now. Ball at the 42-yard line, got to get to the 39. From wherever you are listening to us with 5.25 to go, we thank you for tuning in to BCU Athletics on the Cata Network, whether you're watching our, our one video stream of the season on YouTube or you're listening on 1380 The Cat WELE, further afield. We thank you for your patronage for today's game and all season long. Screen pass, low catch by the running back, Josh Hampton, he falls forward close to the first down, to the 40. He's going to be short by a yard. Needed three, got two. Jumped the punter. And it's a three and out. And I'm not time, counting, nor do I really have the ability one. to count. But I don't think there's been a three and out in this game. Make some noise. Now, Earl, of course, in the first fans. half, there were, there were a bunch. There's, this is the first three and out of the second half for either team, which kind of shows you like how good the both offenses have been in this second half. Unfortunately, the Tigers have nothing to show for it. The Wildcats have 31 points. They are going to punt now. Tink board. With Lockhart standing at his own 30-yard line. The punt is almost blocked. Somebody was shooting through there. Boyd calls for a fair catch at the 17-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. That's a good punt from Kenneth Lockhart. Flips the field completely from his own 30 to the opposing 29. Uh, from the, the opposing 18, excuse me. 4-16 to go in the game. I wouldn't mind giving uh, Tyleek Bethea a chance at quarterback here. Uh, let's with, see Let's see what happens. With the game out of reach. I would stay with Sprague, man. Let, let him open up some more of that, get some more of that confidence. Maybe get some of the, the vitamin shop, underclassmen wide receivers in there. Sprague's coming back out. Come visit us at 2266 
the tink board in. I wouldn't be surprised if Bethune Cookman just starts to run the ball. Terry Lindsay is in there running back. The redshirt junior. Once again, set your calendars. I'll tell you after this first play from the 18 yard line, one man in motion. Hand off Lindsay running right to the 20, dips a tackle, gets out of bounds after about a five yard gain. Uh, we are on the air at 7 p.m. on Thursday. Thursday, not Saturday, Thursday, as the Wildcats take on the Miami Hurricanes from Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. Looking forward to going home. Well, it used to be my home. I've been back to Miami in five years. It's my first time back in Dade County. Second down and five after the five-yard rush by Lindsey. He's still in their sidecar left. They've got Khalil Overton in there as the tight end. Hand off Lindsey up the middle, nowhere to go. He actually loses two yards back to the 21-yard line. Nathaniel Chisholm in there to make the stop for Savannah State. Clock running at 325, 31 to six, Wildcats. And the Wildcats will close out what looks like a comfortable win on the scorecards, but we were anything but comfortable at halftime when the score was seven to three. <laughs> You're right about that. Third down and eight from the 21. Looking to the sideline to get the play. We've got a couple of different receivers in. Cameron Overton is in. See if he gets a chance to make a play. Sprague, low snap, four-man rush. Pressure coming off the backside. Sprague gets the pass away. It's caught on the near sideline. A leaping catch. He drags one foot and keeps it in bounds. Jalen Terzardo with his first catch of the game, and it was a very acrobatic one. First down, BCU at the 33. We saw him make an acrobatic catch last week up in Memphis, too. Took a shot to make yeah. that catch as well. Bethune Cookman still on the march now at the 33 yard line. 2.29 to go and counting. Sprague on a screen pass to the left side, and it's dropped by Omari Stort. Incomplete second and 10. He was open too, man. He had some room. Prior to the snap, down down ball start. Side. Number 10, offense. Five yard penalty. First, First chance for Omari Stort even to make a play in this game. Had one big catch for 20 yards last week against Memphis. And we're going to see. Juvensley Bazul come in. Bazul has two touchdowns on the day. And he's been Bethune Cookman's top rusher, 35 yards and two scores. One from 13, one from 22. First down and 15 now after a penalty. It's going to be Bazul. Cuts it back to the left side. Falls forward to the 35. Spot him at the 36 yard line. Gets the penalty yards back and more, setting up second down and eight. And you're seeing the offensive lineman driving the defensive front from Savannah back. I saw a pancake block 15 yards downfield. I tell you what, Bazul is maybe the most shifty back that the Wildcats have. He will make you miss in a shoebox in the backfield. <laughs> and he's strong up, upper body, too. He has some quick feet. He's shifty, but he's strong up top. Don't have a running back on the roster that's over six foot tall. 5'10", 5'7", 5'11", 5'10", the four running backs on the death chart. Bazile still in there. Second down and seven from the 41. Bazile takes the snap, runs straight up the middle, driving forward, pushing the pile to the 42 yard line. He waited patiently that time and found a crease. I believe a pickup of six that time sets up Third down and two from the 41. Minute 30 to go. Officially a gain of eight. No, officially a gain of five. Third and two from the 41. Hand off Bazool. Gets around the edge, 40 oh. to the 50. Weaving through tacklers and down to the Savannah State 41 yard line. And we have found lightning in a bottle with JJ Bazool. I think we found a running back and we found a quarterback. Well, we can do it by committee because we have a great group of backs and quarterbacks. And we've got different kinds of backs. You got Jaden Bivens, who's just going to power his true rate up the middle. You got Terry Lindsay and Bazool, who for shiftiness, Robinson's also kind of your shorter power guy. You know, you can mix and match backs for different situations. And the Wildcats 
are into the best formation in football, the victory formation with under a minute left to go on the clock. They will seal a 31 to six victory. The Wildcats are in the win column in year 100, Darrell Latiel. Well, I'd like to congratulate our head coach. He's done a remarkable job in seven months. In first home game here in Daytona, Tigers. the Wildcats take a 31 to 6 victory over Savannah State Tigers. The toughest stretch of the season for BCU is coming up in the next week. At Miami, at Jackson State, at Alabama State. Two of the top three teams in the swag on the road, back to back. The clock hits triple zeros, and this one belongs to the Maroon Gold. Randy Woody takes his first win as BCU head coach as the Wildcats defeat the Tigers of Savannah State. Well, I'll tell you what, if you turn in, tune in early to the pregame show on Thursday night against Miami, you're going to hear Luke Sprint because I'm getting him for the, for the, for the midweek interview. I got to hear what it was like to play and win for the first time at Bethune Cookman. Let's run you through some final numbers. Bethune Cookman, 15, I'm uh, sorry, 25 first downs to Savannah's 15, 29 carries for 125 yards, Savannah 27 carries for 80 yards. Um, BCU 25 receptions for 262 yards in the air. Uh, Savannah State 17 completions for 193 yards. Kick returns, passing plays, number of plays kind of neg negligible. The big stack of jumps out to me, Savannah State, nine penalties for 95 yards, three penalties for 20 yards between Cookman, and under five penalties to two games back to back. It shows that we are disciplined ball club. When you come in and you revamp the roster like we did, bring in a new offensive coordinator, you got 19 new stars, and you don't see any false start, jumping offside, no, no unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, disciplined football, the film good is gonna be dangerous down the road. Let's get you some statistical leaders. Dion Bell led Savannah State with eight tackles. Tavari Bruton also had eight. Yaris Thomas led all uh, everybody in the ball game with nine tackles. Felton Quarles Jr. Two. had four. Amir Phillips had one sack for Savannah State. Dearest Thomas and Jalen Christian each had one for Bethune Cookman. Luke Sprague had 223 yards passing. Jaden Adams 184. Davino Ellington had six catches, but was tipped in yards by Tink Boyd. Three or for uh, 68 yards had Tink on got it? yeah Tink 68 yards on two catches. Wow, I think that last touchdown was Tink Boyd. No, it's still showing as Dakari Allen Johnson. Dakari? Yeah, it is. Um, rushing Juvensley Bazile, 64 yards for Bethune Cookman. Also had the two rushing touchdowns. Joseph Hampton had 53 yards for Savannah State. As the BCU Marching Wildcats play us out with the alma mater, we say farewell to you from Daytona Stadium. Your final score, the Duke Brooklyn Wildcats 31, the Savannah State Tigers 6. BCU Nation, you can smile tonight. The Wildcats are on the board in season 100. For our entire production staff here at Food Cookman University and at the uh, Daytona Stadium, Darren McCaskill, executive producer. For our WELE team back on the radio, their Ford executive producer and halftime show host down there, Daryl the Teal up in the booth. My name is Michael Tuillo saying so long from BCU. Once again, a 31 6 winner. We will see you on Thursday as the Wildcats take on Miami.
Amen.